Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Oh, Welcome. Oh, look, UK and Hawaii. Oh, wow, I'm so jealous. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at you guys are so excited to see us. Can well, you hear us? Hopefully that is a, a yes. So um, the mics are showing actually very strong here lines. Yes. So hopefully that means everything is coming across to you um, really well. So we have a lot of fun toys in front surgery. of us. Surgery. Surgery toys, <laughs> which sounds really, really bad. <laughs> We should have thought about that before we said that. Right? That's okay. You just never know. And we. Cool. So I, I was going to say something about playing doctor, but that would sound even worse. <laughs> I mean, we have like the surgical tools. So we, we I didn't do. bring the, the fancy scalpel up here. I but... could, you could be like yeah. scissors, scissors and I could pass them to Stat. you and, and, and tweezers. Stat. <laughs> As we Got do it. So, surgery, yes. surgery. We, we... <laughs> Surgery, surgery, surgery. Yeah, I thought that that was my hair sticking up, but it's a tong in the bed. It's, it's a thing in the wall. And I'm like, oh my God, I have like massive hair issues. But uh, um, show up for the surgery, stay for the puns. Hey, hey. You just never <laughs> you, know. You never know what's what going to happen. We are going to say. The wonderful thing is we don't plan any of it. Because, so it's just like, really, did we just say that? Yes. Yes, yes we, did. we did. And it's on YouTube forever. <laughs> ever and ever. So, um, yeah, we had a ton of you guys have signed up for this. So yes. if you aren't watching us live and you're catching us later on, um, we'll still be checking uh, messages, not messages, but the, comments. The comments and, and answering things and so on and so forth. Yeah. The kits, if, um, you know, we'll be still checking. So you, yeah. we're not going to take that down or anything. No, so you no. can pop in if you... Uh, see everything and you go oh yeah i totally want wow mm -hmm. that's i want to be there mm -hmm. i totally want to be there but okay so i was just saying if you see and then you go yep i really want to make that now that i see how instead of just reading a pattern mm -hmm. um i can actually see somebody telling me what to do because sometimes yeah. patterns can be confusing to read they can. um you know i mean we sometimes discuss I'm like what, what, I, what do you think saying? this means because yeah. that doesn't really make doesn't sense. make sense um so uh we've got some partially completed things we're going to do a little bit of um some movie magic on on some things mm -hmm. here so that we can actually get everything done the way yeah. um but we're gonna actually thread everything live mm -hmm. um and we will stitch all of the different stitches live so you guys can see yeah how everything works and so and... really important for us though if you have questions um please don't hesitate to put a comment in because if i can't or we can't answer or show you that part right now, we promise when we get close to the end and we've done all of the pieces and parts of the stuff that we want to do, we'll go back yep. and show you more details if there's Absolutely. something that you missed or you had a question. So definitely make sure that you're asking the questions because <coughs> that's the so sorry, best way me. that we can make sure that we are answering them. Um, but yeah, we're super excited uh, to do this. And if it's a little bit loud here, we do apologize. The store is the open. Store is open. So. And uh, Gene is back, and he forgets that we're online. So <laughs> you, never, <laughs> you think it's funny sometimes what we say. <laughs> you never know what it's going to be coming from. Uh, around the corner. Yes, so, and uh, so the customers, they can't see us from around the corner here, so they may not know that we're, um, we probably should have put like um, Hazel our, over in the our, corner uh, that said we're filming. We're filming thing, we probably should have popped that up, but yes. you know. But we are, uh, we, we are. We didn't remember that. We it's Until just now. While. Yeah. Yeah, what you looking for, Hayden? Nothing. You that, want, yeah, if you wanna put that up so people don't think yeah. we're crazy. Well, I was crazy thinking we and... could, um, we could probably pin it to like Hazel and put Hazel kind of in the doorway over there just so people, um, in case they didn't want what they said to be live on YouTube forever. forever. Um, yeah. So Anna said that she couldn't find where she can purchase the pattern on your website. I'm pretty sure that we can um, put that up in the comments. I can do that. Um, I know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> It might take Lisa me a second. Is using but my computer I, and my I'm, mouse. I'm on is... computer duty today, guys, so it might be a little slower than normal because yes. it's normally her job. Yep. So how about so, if we just kind of um, we're gonna totally pop that up have, um, and um, we'll kind of get started. So what we're gonna start with first is we're going to thread the machine for a three thread. Um, and the beauty of this setup is that I have the ability to do this too. And we are on the camera that we want to be. So this Yay. is <laughs> the Triumph. So um, everything that we're going to be doing today um, is capable on all of our eight thread machines. 
Um, but a lot of the things that we're talking about are also going to be uh, compatible on the different styles of machines that we have. So we will talk about the different ways that you can do this on other machines if this is not the machine that you have. So, uh, but we're going to start with a three thread rolled hem. One of the beautiful things about these machines is their ease of threading. So we are going to basically re-thread the machine over and over and over again today so that you can see just how easy it is and really how quick it is because I'll be doing it live. So I don't have the machine threaded at all. Um, I do have my needle in over here. And I know this isn't perfect, but it's kind of an overview of what it looks like inside the machine here. So for a three thread, we need to get the machine ready for threading. So I'm gonna turn my little threading dial over here. I'm gonna walk my hand wheel towards me. The machine is going to click in place. That means my tubes are now locked and I can go ahead and I can start. So what I'm gonna be doing is putting some fun thread in my upper looper. So I have a really pretty variegated thread. You could use all kinds of different threads in your serger. Um, which is kind of one of the really fun things about it. So I am threading. So I'm gonna do both my upper looper and my lower looper at the same time, because we can. Yeah. And then you'll only hear one really loud, obnoxious motor. <laughs> only one <laughs> Yep. Sounds like a jacket. <laughs> it does, it, it is a little bit loud. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just trimming off the, um, the fuzzy edge and I've got my little tweezers here. You can do this any way that you would like, but I'm basically just gonna put the end in the little tube here and then just scooch it down a bit. And so I wanna make sure that I, I usually have something stuck on my door at some point and uh, I have to pull it through a little bit, but right now I've got that in my upper looper and I'm going to thread my lower looper. So there is a tension disc that you can't see in the back that it just sort of snaps in. And um, all I'm doing is clipping it in there. You can kind of hear it if you're sitting in front of your serger, but you can see how quick it is because it doesn't take two seconds to do that. It, yeah, no doubt. All right, and then this red um, uh, tweezer, it clashes with my pink nails. <laughs> <laughs> That's All why right. you shouldn't have pink nails. Right? So <laughs> you do want to make sure that you have a bunch of tail thread here so um, because it has a long way to go. Yeah, this serger has a five inch throat. So um, much different than a lot of the air threading, you need a lot more thread loose there to make through, make it all the way across. Absolutely. So I'm going to push the button and I've got this one and oops, I got a little bit of a bunch here. So let's try that again. Angle it is. A little bit. It's, so it's got some static clean going see on. See what happens when you're live? <laughs> All right. This is really, oh, it's probably because I'm stuck back here. Too many threads. So I was concentrating super hard on my, my posting of that link. Yes. Um, did we answer Miss Marilyn's question? I did not. So, um, I, it will surprise you to know that I have both polyester and cotton in the machine right now. <laughs> so, oh, look at the picture. <laughs> oh, that's an adorable photo. So, I hope your birthday was fantastic, by the way. She she uh, blessed us with her presence on her birthday. She did. So, so why wouldn't it? I know, right? You, you partied with us, so of course it was a wonderful birthday. <laughs> So, um, yes, you can actually put just about anything through your serger, um, and we have a, a mixture here, but um, you can mix. You can have all cottons, all polys, um, but there's very few things that you can't figure out some way to make work. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of fun because sometimes um, we've got threads that, you know, we really want to make work that just won't play friendly in a sewing machine. Um, and they just work like butter um, mm -hmm. here in a serger. So that makes for some friends. So I'm going to um, turn the... I'm going to stop talking because you Just for a second. Me. All right. And so what I did was I used the air threader for the needle. And I pulled that bad boy through. So super easy to do. And so I've got my... Oops, I got him caught on the other thing over here. There we go. So I've got my um, needle threaded. You sure do. 
and um, both of my loopers. So I've already got my machine all set up for doing this. I just need to make a couple of adjustments in my stitch length and my stitch width. So I have a stitch dial on the side over here and my fancy dancy card is gonna tell me that I need to have this on D because I'm doing a rolled hem. So D stands for really decorative in my mind. So that's kind of how I remember that. And then I am going to take my machine off of threading and put it onto serging. I'm gonna bring my blade up and I'm gonna turn my dial over here. There is a little area that tells me standard or rolled. So I'm gonna to go to the rolled part. And when I do that, then there is a little guy over here that kind of flips down um, and gives me that opportunity to do that. And um, I've got my stitch width here. I wanna be at its narrowest point. So I've got my machine ready. Um, and Lisa's gonna flip over and show you. I just wanna show, show you, you real quick that card that she mentioned. And this comes with all of- This is how I um, know. Our uh, air machine. threading sergers with the auto tensions. And it tells you exactly where to put all of those things that she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to memorize anything. You don't have to know really anything. It just pops up there all by its little lonesome. You just mm -hmm. follow that card. Yep. And so it's super, super easy. There's our needle, there's our stitch, which is D for, as she was saying, decorative. Um, your blade position, everything is listed there. So very simple. You don't have to be a surging whiz mm -hmm. to use any of these sergers. Yes, and um, just want to <laughs> wrap it, um, we'll just talk a little bit about the pattern of, that's available for this. Yep. So um, this, this class, <laughs> this webinar, this event, whatever you want to call it, this is completely free and it will remain up on our YouTube and our Facebook ch um, channel. We will, however, not be giving you the instructions for making the serger casserole dish. We will be talking about what we are doing, but if you want the actual instructions and the dimensions of everything that you would need, you would need to purchase that pattern. You can purchase it one of two ways. Um, you can follow that link that Lisa provided um, in the comments a little bit ago, which would allow you to do $10 for the pattern only. It is a direct download and it will come directly to you via your email, or you can yep. purchase a kit and the kit is $30, it includes everything that you need to make it. It also includes the pattern. So yep. just as an FYI, um, the only real way to get the written instructions for this would be to purchase that pattern. All right, so I've threaded the machine for the three thread. Um, I followed my little handy dandy card right now and um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do some um, surging. So. I want to make sure that um, <laughs> yeah, I'm that differential feed. It's really easy to have that set somewhere. Absolutely, especially fun. when you're monkeying around yeah. doing something. So this machine has a couple of really fun uh, tricks to it. So right now I still have my presser foot up. So if I put my foot on the pedal, nothing will happen. Which you guys can't see, but I can hear. Yes. So she's literally so stepping on the happening. gas, <laughs> and nothing is happening on the machine. Mm -hmm. So we only have a couple machines that have that feature built into it, and it's um, a couple of the new. Mm -hmm. ones to the line. It's this one and the Acclaim. Yes. So those are the two that have that safety, for lack of a better word, um, feature built into it. So um, you can't accidentally sew with your foot up and get those really yucky, messy mm -hmm. looking stitches on the back. Um, do you want to open up your casserole carrier so they can see? We're going to be talking about um, a couple of different ways that you could embellish your pocket for this. So... Here is Lisa's pocket. So this is mine and um, a, this is not one of the kits on there. I use fabrics at home. So um, this is the pocket and in the instructions it has you um, creating this size. And I did follow them pretty much for the most part. I did a little bit of adjustments. Um, but good. the sizes um, are pretty much there. I followed the, you know, go down this many inches, yada, 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 all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so that you guys can see what it would be, for the most part, what it would look like if that was there. Um, this has got a stitch through the center, so there's actually two sleeves here, um, and that would be just for your serving utensil that you're taking to wherever you're going with your 
carrier. So Absolutely. your tongs or whatever it is that you're tossing in there, that way you've got somewhere that it doesn't hopefully fall out as you're traveling. Yep. So that is what we're going to be talking about right now is this little pocket guy right there. Yes. So let's go back to the machine and um, You've got all of your stitches selected, and I do. we're going to do a rolled hem. We are going to do a rolled hem. So in the instructions, they're having you take your piece of fabric and basically fold it in half, and you would be folding it right sides together, and you would be working on the outside of your pocket. But if you wanted to embellish your pocket because... Um, just because you can, right? Because, right. I mean, it's it's just fun to be able to play with the decorative threads. Then you might want to be sewing on the outside of your pocket because you wouldn't want your pretty threads to be on the inside. Right. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of stitching on this little piece of material here. And All right, so I've just got my fabric lined up over here. You aren't going to be able to see really my pile of fluff over here for a few <laughs> minutes, but it's going to be cutting. So this is a really fun decorative stitch. Um, it's a little bit hard to see um, the fun colors. There you go. So that is that beautiful um, variegated thread that she was telling you. In which looper did you put that in? That is in my upper looper. So if we want to see that, that's the looper we want to be choosing. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to put that in both. Um, but just for clarification, if you want to see that clearly on both sides, you would need to have a matching thread in both your upper and lower. Mm -hmm. So um, if that, that is what you're going to see on the back if you only have that in the upper. Absolutely. Um, which there's nothing wrong with. That just tells you which side is the top. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and especially for a pocket, mm -hmm. of course, you're not going to see the back. So this would be instead of doing a standard overlock stitch right sides together mm -hmm. and then turning it, this would be just putting those wrong sides together and making that beautiful edge so that you can um, just see those really pretty mm -hmm. colors um, as an option. Absolutely. And if you wanted something that maybe wasn't quite as dainty, um, really we can make two minor changes in what we have on our machine and we can get a wide um, three thread, which you would be able to see the decorative threads as well. So all Absolutely. I would have to do is adjust <coughs> my stitch length, which is the knob on the bottom over here. Do, do. So right it's this there. guy right here. So I'm turning that so it's in the standard surging part. And then I would adjust my um, selector. stitch selector. Yeah, that's the button I'm looking for to see or B, depending on what it what is you want, um, to look like. you want to do. And then um, you could just go ahead and stitch again. So I'll stitch again so that you can see this is going to be a little bit wider. And um, it's not going to be so tight because I've adjusted my stitch length. And this one did not come out as nice as I wanted it to. <laughs> that thread is really, really fat over there. It so, is. Um, it's a hard one. It is. It rolled a little bit. So you get that little bit of a roll, mm -hmm. um, but with that heavy thread, it, it definitely pulls just a little bit. But um, you can actually work some of that out um, by pulling yourself. Mm -hmm. So there we go. And then if we go to our standard three thread, again, all I did was move my dial to the B selector. B as in boy. And then I get this stitch. And I generally am choosing either the B as in boy or mm -hmm. D as in dog. Yep. That is my preferred. Um, so that is your standard three thread and then again, on the back, you're going to see um, just that standard solid. Yep. So. 
So Louisa, if you go to our website and you type in or you follow the link that Lisa provided up at the top, so it's SIP, S-I-P, a N D surge, sip and surge. You're going to see a picture of the casserole carrier. When you select that option, um, then you have to use the menu. So yep. um, it'll say select. So you would either select, um, I think the first thing that comes up is um, class, no pattern. Um, if you select in that area, then you would be able to um, get a different option. So, yep. so the specific wording, it says class only, no kit. And then there's that little triangle that's pointing down arrow. When you click on that, it will give you the different options. And the pattern only is one of the options if that's what you want. Um, or you can pick and choose the different parts um, however you would like there. So the link um, that's just a couple comments up from yours um, will take you uh, there to that page and then you can choose from there. Mm -hmm or you can search SIP and A-N-D surge, mm -hmm. and it will be there as well. You'll see the picture of the casserole carrier. Yep, so um, I have a lot of options that I can pick and choose how I want to embellish my pocket. The other thing that this machine has that is really unique to this is the wave stitch. Should we show them how easy it is I, to go I to the wave? I think we need to totally do the wave. All right. Ready? Woo! Woo! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's how you, you do the wave, that. right? Yeah, absolutely. You forgot I was going to do that, didn't I you? I totally knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I right. told you weeks ago that I was going to do that. So um, She didn't do it with me, though. She said she would. I did. I did this. I just didn't get I, If, you know, oh, I'll take the camera excuses, out. Excuses, excuses. I know, right? So we have a, a button on this machine. So the wave stitch is not exclusive to every single um, serger. It's only going to be on the select serger, so it will be on the Acclaim, it will be on the Accolade, it will be on the <laughs> Triumph. Those are the three that we have currently. That is correct. Um, so we're going to switch this dial up to the Wave because that is numero uno, the very first option that you should do because if you don't, you will forget. It, yeah, it won't work. <laughs> yeah, every time I don't do that first, that's what I forget and I'm like, this does not look right. Every time. Very important. <laughs> then, Gotta tell it you want to do the wave. Um, do you want to show them? It's probably easier for you to show the card because they're really yes. not going to see me so, swapping um, things over So, again, you get all of your instructions, and I'm just making sure that you guys can see mm -hmm. um, with no glare because there is a bit of glare. So, again, we're going to have that one uh, needle in. You've got your length, which is your choice. So, depending upon how close you want those stitches, anywhere from 0.75 to two and a half. Your width, they're recommending at five. And your stitch selector on B. Now, you'll see right here is it says wave. And that is where, again, you want to make sure that you flip that switch. We're not using any of the chain needle or loop retentions because we're not doing a chain stitch. And again, we're on the Triumph, so that's there. That won't be there on all machines, only one that has those. We do want our upper looper in the up position, our blade in the up position, and we want our knife cover on. Our subsidiary looper needs to be in the right position. Mm -hmm. And that is all you have to do. So you just follow the directions and your stitch will look just like that. Yeah. You can see the three threads that are here and they do actually give you the path where those would all go if you needed help with that. Yep, and we are definitely going to want to change one of our threads because our colors are going to look entirely too uh, similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my upper looper thread. So I want to have a contrasting color there. So I'm going to go ahead and put white in there because we do have the turquoise in the other one. Now, um, I think Lisa pointed out that you do have to shift your threads. So that's super important. So the needle thread moves from my upper looper, yep. or from my right needle to my left needle. And then my upper looper thread is going to go into my um, right needle position. So I don't need to do anything but just slide them in a slightly different spot. So I'm just hanging my thread back up here. Sorry. Sorry about the arms. There we go. There's nowhere to get around that. Nope. So, and then I'm just going to come down. So um, I'm just going to pull my threads right out. 
And as long as you have your foot up, that generally goes pretty smoothly. Um, some thread slides easier than others. Um, that uh, variegated was a little thick, so it pulled a little harder, but see it's coming right out of there. Yep. So that's my upper looper and that's my lower looper. So here we go. I'm putting this back in to my upper looper. So again, I do have to make sure that I turn my machine into the threading. Just that easy. Whoops. I got a giant little piece of fuzz that you cannot see. You know that giant little one. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. There it so comes that right out quick, there. Do, do, do. I like to put it underneath my foot. It's really um, a habit, not a requirement. So back to surging, close my doors, and let's check it out. Let's check it out. So um, I am on, what do I need to be on? B or oh, C? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, B as in boy. B. And my length and width, does it have Length anywhere from basically nothing to two and a half, width to five. <laughs> All right, so B width is five, so we're low, and then our stitch selector, or my stitch length, let's go small. I, would, I was gonna say, I would go smaller so that your stitches are tighter. Mm -hmm. um, when you have them too far apart, you don't really get a, as much of the effect. So, um, and you can see that coming off the back there how it's already doing that. And that is the effect that we are really looking for there. So that is that beautiful wave stitch. And this is why we change threads, or yep. Sarah changed the thread, I just watched her do it. But that is, um, if you don't have contrasting threads, you get that dip from uh, it, it shifting, but like you, you don't, don't see it. the change. You just have that needle thread kind of weaving through there. So, mm -hmm. oops, sorry. That's a small window I have there. <laughs> <laughs> really small window. Um, but yeah, so that is the beautiful stitch. And this can be used as a decorative edge. You can use this to add in um, zippers. You, yeah. you can do so many things. Um, it doesn't have to be um, it can be a construction stitch. Yes. I mean, it can be so many things. It's all a matter of what do you want it to be. And so just one more time to clarify, you can see that shift here just from those red arrows that, and the lines showing you where to put those threads. So again, you don't have to memorize anything. You just look at it and do what it tells you to do so Absolutely. that you can see exactly what it's going to look like when you're done. If you follow the guide, it will work perfect every time. Mm -hmm. And we're just sewing on standard cottons here, but you could switch between different fabrics and it will still continue to do those same beautiful stitches. Absolutely. Without you having to change things. The wave stitch is one of those stitches. If your fabric, so what I did, and you might not have noticed because I really didn't see anything, was I really, I folded this. You doubled this. it, yep. So I really have four layers right here. Um, the, the stiffer the fabric is when you do your wave stitch, the better the, the better. stitch is going to look. If if I try the wave stitch on this and I just have a single layer or I just have two layers and it hasn't been like starched or or I don't have anything, it will it will show it well, but it will pull it in just a little bit. Um, yes. You guys have heard us say before, things do work better when they're stiff, right? Yep. So yep. you can see here. Yep. Here, I'll hold this guy up comparatively with that. So the one in the red and white is two layers of fabric and you can see the difference. The one with the turquoise is what we just did and that one had four layers. So you can see she doubled over mm -hmm. the fold. So very big difference in the how robust and how full that stitch is coming out. Yep. And then here's another sample of a rolled hem. Rolled hem. That one might be a little bit more noticeable than this one. There's a little more contrast in that thread. Yep, just in the thread colors. It's fun. I love the rolled hem. It's so simple and mm -hmm. it really just gives you so many options. Um, and again, you can use them um, to finish things so easily. You know, if you're doing napkins for someone, if you're doing 
um, you can use them in construction and have that be that finished edge. Absolutely. There's just so many options and it's so simple. And, you know, we hear all the time people calling and saying that their, you know, sergers are their hardest machine and they don't use it. It sits in the closet because they can't figure out how to use them. Mm -hmm. So you guys can see how simple we're switching from one stitch to the next and we're just turning a couple of dials. There isn't any craziness no. going on and we don't have to know Baby what to Lock do. Baby Lock didn't have to pay me to learn how to and do They didn't have to give to bribe me to learn to do that. No, <laughs> um, they, they actually just gave it to us with this beautiful card. So there is um, literally a box for all of these different <laughs> type. I mean, it, it's just so simple. It and is. I, this is one of the things for me because, you know, I came into this, I had never used a serger before, mm -hmm. and I made a lot of clothes growing up, but never had touched a serger. And I had always done them with a sewing machine that, I mean, it was an okay mm -hmm. sewing machine, you know, it was an old singer and, you know. It served its purpose. It served its purpose and clothes didn't fall off me, so they did an okay job, you know, but um, I was absolutely blown away. Um, and so the concepts behind how sergers worked and how the stitches were supposed to i didn't have an, any idea and so coming in and not having to worry about the tensions and which dials to turn to get to what and all of those things it's just such an ease and a joy to sit down in front of your serger and know it's going to work oh yeah i mean for years i've been teaching sergers and i always tell people while i can teach anybody how to thread a serger sip <laughs> it's the it's the learning the little nuances yep. of when it's not right, which one do I adjust? Because technically, right, if you have an upper looper and a lower looper, if the lower looper is going down to the bottom, it could be that the upper looper is too loose or it could be because the lower looper it's is too, too tight. tight. How so, do you know which one's which? Right, how do you know how to, how to, how to make those um, micro adjustments. With this, you uh, you don't really have to worry about that because the machine, if you have followed your recipe card, the serger will be correct. Um, if, if your stitch doesn't come out, you missed something yep. in the process. Um, and, and, and I know none of you like to hear, I'm sorry, it's probably you, but right. with this machine, it's generally us that it makes is. the mistake because it is extremely rare for there to be a problem with these machines. Uh, yep. extremely rare for there to be a problem Absolutely. with the machine that we didn't cause. <laughs> but, you know, and the I always tell people, like, at the beginning you make a mistake and then there's this, then there's this, um, like, sweet spot where you're paying attention to everything um, and you, you, everything Everything's is perfect. perfect. And then you're like, and then all of a sudden things go wrong again and it's because you got so used to it that you have, you stopped, you stopped double paying checking attention. to make sure that you had all of your, your uh, ducks in a row. Well, in the, I, for me, the one thing that, like this project was a perfect example. We sat down and we were talking about it and mm -hmm. I was like, all right, so I put piping in a, something last year mm -hmm. because we were talking about different decorative edges. So I added beading and I did piping and were things that I had never done. Well, that was the extent of my piping, mm -hmm. was putting it in a strip that was literally this wide right. and sewing it onto another piece of fabric. No corners, no anything. So I sat down to do this one and I was like, oh, oh how do you do that you know and so but the wonderful thing was i didn't have to worry about my serger i just had to go okay how do i attach this mm -hmm. because i didn't have to figure anything out about how the serger was going to work it was yep. literally how to apply it and then when i actually sat down to apply it i went oh. what was i worried about yeah, this is so easy really was so we're going to get into that in just a few minutes yes but um that is absolutely the joy of these beautiful machines mm -hmm. is that they work and they work every time yes so, so. Um, we talked about how to embellish using the three thread portion of this machine. Um, are we going to do a four thread? We're going to do a four thread. Okay. So let's add a needle. You got any of those? I have some. Excellent. They're, they're over here. So we are currently set up one more time in case somebody missed it for a three thread. Mm -hmm. So we are now going to use a four thread. And what we're going to do Helps with if that. You have the right screwdriver. It does. Yep. So um, we are going to set that up with a four thread and we're going to show you how to do that beautiful piping. Yep. So. And this is going to be easier if I just redo, um, redo both needles. needles. Yeah. Get it out of your way. Get it out of my way. Yep. So, do, do, do. 
So there we go. I got an upper looper and a lower looper down there and no needle threads. Okay, so I'm gonna add the other one. So, uh, so there's a little doodad over here. Probably easier if you see the other range. Yep. So let's try that guy. All right. So the needles are back here and we have a couple of different sets of needles. So um, I like to actually do this um, with my foot down because I can get in here a little bit. Um, there's a space over here where your needles go. So what I do is I put the flat part of the needle um, in my finger. I come down straight and then I into come- Into like the hole where the, the needle would hole. go when the needle's down. That's right. Yep. And then I bring it Same straight goes. up. Exactly what I do. And you will be able to see the tip tops of your needles over here. Obviously you're not gonna see that on my little video over here, um, but it is there. And then I'm just tightening that up. I also then uh, tug a little bit just to Making make sure, sure it's got a good grip mm -hmm, that I have it. Now, not all of our sergers have this little Allen screw um, version. Yep. Some of you do have a larger screw there. Yep. The, um, the Imagine, if you've got an older one, um, the Victory is the newer mm -hmm. um, size machine that has that. That's got a, a standard flat screwdriver. What um, you looking for? My, did I grab something I wasn't supposed to? Nope, you're okay. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I don't know if I believe you. I don't believe him. All right. So I'm sorry <laughs> I've got my arm in the screen again here, but I'm getting ready to do my two uh, needles. So I'm clicking in the back. I want to make sure I put my foot up now, foot clicking up. in the back. Making and sure then we're in those I've got regions. two, and I'm going to come across under. Over this is a lot like a regular sewing machine, and again I'm going in behind this guy right here. And so, are you doing the left needle first? I am. Um, Why would you do that? Because the opening is on that side. <laughs> <laughs> which Obviously, is, I knew that answer, guys. Yeah, which that is was for your benefit. Why so. I do the left needle before the right needle. Um, you can certainly bring both needles over and across. Um, and we do have a fantastic needle threader on here that you can certainly use. Um, if you are at home and you do not want to use your, there goes my scissors. This is perfect because it's live. Um, you can certainly, uh, I can get this threaded with a pair of tweezers as well. So I usually just bring my finger towards the back and kind of rub the back and, and then pull the thread. <laughs> All I right. Like a good back rub. I mean, hey, doesn't everybody like everybody a good... likes a good back rub? So why wouldn't your thread? Why wouldn't my and your thread? needle? Absolutely. And my needle. Every needle needs a rub down. Okay. Ab sure. Whatever so, you say. <laughs> we've got that. And so for this needle, I'll go ahead and bring the needle threader down just so that you can see you're it both ways. Threading. And so um, if you are trying to do this, right, and you're and wondering it's, it's fighting why you, right? it doesn't work. Like, hey, wait a minute. Because you have to be in threading. This machine is very, very smart. So I'm going to put it in threading and then I'm going to turn my hand wheel and click myself in position. And I'm going to go ahead and hold that close and it's going to get loud here for a second. And there you go. So I have the fancy needle threader. So we have a wonderful question here. Um, and the question is, do thread nests happen with sergers? It looks like there's a lot of thread going under the needles. Not a baby lock. <laughs> <laughs> Not on a baby lock. Triumph. Not on a baby <laughs> So the only times that you ever get a thread nest is if um, you've done something wrong. Um, so I have occasionally done that because I'm super bad at sewing with my foot up. And that's not really a thread nest. Um, it's your loopers trying to work down there with your foot up. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not a true thread nest like we're used to with a sewing machine, but it is a mess underneath the fabric. Mm -hmm. um, and that will only happen if you are sewing with your foot up um, which this project, I was so proud of myself. I got through the whole thing um, until I literally was doing my last seam and then I forgot to put the foot down. <laughs> um, but um, it was so thick by the time I got the, the pieces together, it, it looked down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, but anyway, um, that is the only time you would ever see that. And again, that is on a, um, a personal problem, yeah. not the machines. The machines will not thread nest. No, and one of the things that we love about this brand of machine is because of these threading tubes and how everything nests together underneath it, 
you won't have the same complicated process right. that you would have on a non-air threaded machine. So every other brand of machine that is not air threaded has to be threaded in a very, very particular order. order. And right. that is because you have essentially loopers that are laying over like this, and then you've got needle threaders that come underneath and they wrap themselves around the loopers. And um, if, a, if a thread breaks, what happens is it's kind of like you have a knot there and now you're trying to introduce right. another piece of, of the, the knot that's not connected. So it doesn't connect. It doesn't it just, get inside where it's supposed to fit in in the weave. Yes. So um, that it just continues to, to create issues or break threads. So we don't necessarily have to worry about that um, with these sergers. Now, because I came from different brands of sergers, there are certain things that I do. Um, to and prevent I, that anyway. Th right, that I don't even think about it. Whenever I am changing from a different style of stitch, I always pull my threads, my needle threads, back up to the top of the machine. Um, mostly out of habit, not out of necessity for these machines. Right. So if you're watching me, I there's you're, you're doing this. I there I have an you're obsession. Not cutting the machine, right? right? I have giving it some love. It, it is it's silly. I have an obsession with the threads being on top of the machine when I start stitching. So um, that is why I have it. Is there a left? She would like to know um, where you put the foot down. Oh yes, there is on this side right here. This is my presser foot button. It is very conveniently up front, so you're not reaching around the back of the machine trying to get to it. Mm -hmm. um, that is the only, this is the only machine that has it all the way up front like this. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, it's very nice um, right. where that's at. This machine will also not let me close if I am still in the threading, in the position, threading position and I'm not prepared so I can make sure that I've got that. So when you go into the threading position, you literally lose all control over the machine. So you yep. cannot use your hand wheel. So it locks it that's down. That's right. If you put your foot on the gas pedal and you start to go, it will kind of, it could potentially twist your gears inside because it's definitely not designed it to stitch that way. So all of these machines with that door open mm -hmm. won't sew. Yes. So even though they don't all have that with the um, foot up, not right. so, they all have the door open, not so feature, um, which when your threader is engaged, they don't close, which means that will be prevented. Absolutely. Which is great. So um, now we have a four thread. So I've added the the opposite needle and we've got this started. So I'm just going to do a little bit. Um, I, I still do a little bit of a test though, just to make sure Absolutely. that I have all of my settings where they are. Um, and so if this was my original pocket, I would have sewn on this on three or actually two sides. I wouldn't do three sides because then I wouldn't be able to turn it. Yeah, that would be really, really hard. Mm -hmm. It would be closed. And sometimes little... my, uh, yeah. Gotta... Even though I, I put them up there, they're underneath my foot. Thank you. You ever notice we're always much messier live? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, whoa. All right, so you guys can see that that blade is up and cutting. And mm -hmm. did you switch to A? I did, but I must have something off because it's not as pretty as it could be. I probably. Something is not. So when in doubt, rethread it. So like we said, there is always a reason for it not looking the way that it's supposed to. And I am going to rethread. Okay, if you drop those scissors, I don't have any more. <laughs> you are no fun. <laughs> okay, mom. I know. <laughs> All right, so threading. Upper looper, lost lower looper. Yeah. It's not lost in space. No. No. 
not lost in space. But um, we definitely were moving a lot of pieces and we parts. Were. Oh, I still have it on Wave. That would do it. See, I didn't need to do that. There's always a reason There's why always a reason. it doesn't look right, and it's always user so, error. <laughs> well, she's just so you guys can see, when we looked at it and said, hey, wait a minute, um, this is what we were seeing. So there's a little roll right here, and that's actually a bit trying to pull that other thread down. Um, and it's in, well, it, I suppose if we had looked at it from a distance, that does kind of look wavish, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, so there's some little periodic pulls there. Um, and we had just not switched because we were, you know, yakking with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's all that that is. Um, Again, the machine doesn't make mistakes. It's the humans that are programming it that make the mistakes. Yeah. So um, she's just rethreading. It'll take just a moment. But this would be what you would do with that pocket. Um, you would fold it right sides together and then sew two sides and then you would turn it. So we literally would push that through, take a turning tool and Get that nice and clean. So we showed you the picture of that pocket. Again, you could certainly choose to um, use a rolled hem or a wave stitch if you wanted that to be super fancy. Um, you would then take this to your iron and give that a nice good press so that you have beautiful seams. And while you are there, turn this under and give that a press as well so it stays nice and pretty for when we go to sew that on so that you would have a smooth folded in edge there as well. So we would then press that finished. Go Star Wars. There we go. Star Wars. All right. All right. So um, there is that pocket. So once you have the pocket um, finished to that extent, you would then set that aside. You don't need to do anything else with the pocket at this point. Press it and set it aside. All right. So, so we are now, now that I rethreaded it for no with um, four thread. Mm -hmm. You have your feet over there. Correct? I do. Yeah. Okay. So um, we are threaded with that four thread. We're going to take our standard foot off, um, and we do get questions a lot. What feet come with the machine, like on the machine in the box? This one is and really hard to figure. This out. one is super hard. This is the foot that comes on the machine, mm -hmm. and there are no additional feet in the box. Um, but right now. We are giving you some some uh, bonuses. Yeah. So um, we should put those. Up we for should a totally second. do that. Yeah. So um, all right. Now that you're see all if I can screw this up. Riveted. Ready? Yes. Boom. Whoa! Oh look, now we have three. Hey, look at that. Hey, we're still I, there. <laughs> I didn't hang up, so go me. <laughs> okay. I was really nervous. <laughs> it's like, oh dear, what's going to happen? Okay, so um, sip and surge. This is what's going on. We've got some, four packages. Um, and the reason that we built packages on these machines is because these are the machines that we had, had in, stock. in stock. And like everything these days, it's a big fat question mark if we go to place an order when something might come in. So it is a big surprise for all parties involved. <laughs> So um, these are machines that we had in stock when we created the program. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the Triumph on the left here. Um, and that is this machine, this beauty that we are sewing on today. So this is the top of the line. MSRP on this machine is 7,500 just for the machine. Mm -hmm. So the one foot. The one foot. And the machine itself. The machine comes with a... Um, user manual so you do get you know set it up like this you get the card that tells you how to thread for all of those stitches but that's what the machine comes with mm -hmm. and it's worth every penny of that let me tell you um, however of course we don't sell it at msrp so there is a really great package that we've put together mm -hmm. you want to go yeah we're super excited about it so um we are including um and there's some pictures underneath the little picture to show you so a trolley because if you want to bring it in for service or it's annual cleaning or um someday when we have uh classes, classes in again. person you might want to bring it to class so you have your rolling trolley or a nice place to store it so you've got that you have the 29 foot kit um, included and the inspiration guide so all of those things are coming with the machine. 
and as a special bonus, so we knew that we were starting our sip and surge, uh, our surger event. Really late really in the month. Late, yeah, absolutely, at the very end of the month. So we got notification from Baby Lock that they are going to be providing a $300 mail-in rebate on the Triumph. So we have decided that if you would like to take advantage of that $300, because who wouldn't? Um, if you place a deposit this week and you take delivery of your serger um, anytime after May 1st, In you May. would qualify you know, to four get days from now. That. So we thought that was a really good way of separating us from everybody else. So we're offering that as well. Or Baby Lock is offering that as well, but we're um, we're giving you the we're opportunity and, and not pretending like we don't know what's happening. Right. Um, and then we have Labu Bucks. Two hundred and fifty dollars to play with. Mm -hmm. So we're giving you the trolley. We're giving you all of the feet. There's one new one that didn't come in the kit because it was created after the kit was made. So there's one foot you could buy. Yeah. But that is a lot of tools and thread and thread. fun stuff. And it doesn't have to be serger stuff. Mm -mm. It can be anything really in the store. So yep. Labu Bucks are pretty much anything. The only thing you can't use it for is like um, cabinets and machines, right? Yep. Pretty much. Um, so like, you know, the big, huge ticket items, mm -hmm. but pretty much all of the fun play stuff you can have a lot of fun with. Yep. So $250 of basically um, fun money. Yes. Um, funny money. Funny money, because we're going to put Jean's picture on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, we really we're talked, we talked about it, but we didn't do it. Um, it was, it was really tempting though, it but we, we didn't, we just called it Labu Bucks. So. Um, and that is all for the fantastic price of only $64.99. <laughs> so that is the package bundle for the Triumph. So all of those things bundled together. Um, and we had eight when we planned all of this. We are down to six. Yes. So um, we've had two people already um, call and put the deposits on those for um, May pickups. Mm -hmm. So um, we are down to six. Yes. The other one on the right there is the accolade. So oh, that is, and then, I'm um, sorry. In tiny print down there, which oh, I'm sure yeah. you can't see, uh, the other <laughs> Baby Lock promotion was if you purchased a Baby Lock um, at the MSRP price, um, then you could get a cabinet for free. So a serger station to sit in. So we're very close to that MSRP price. We're $1,000 off. Um, the MSRP price of the cabinet is essentially um, $2,500. $2, so um, if we go up to that MSRP, which is basically getting you the cabinet for $1,000, if you would like to take partake in that as, as an option. Because you totally need somewhere to put your serger when you buy it. Yes. You can totally get that serger for a thousand, cabinet for a thousand dollars yep, yep. with the purchase of the serger. Yes, and so, we're gonna do that for, for basically all of them. Yep. So, but we just wanted to, to just preface that. That is, that's the little carrot from Baby Lock is that it needs to be at MSRP price. Yep. So, um, which gets you that cabinet at a really great deal. Absolutely. So that's like the little MSRP right and the there. cabinets, 2,500. So huge, huge bun mm -hmm. package there. Yes. All right. So the other eight thread serger is called the Accolade. Yes. It's a little smaller than this one. It is, but it does the same stitches. It has all of the same features um, except for air threading for the needles. Yep. The you can't sew with the foot. Yeah, you can sew with the foot up on that one. <laughs> right, and we didn't really talk about, and I don't have it showing here, the knee lift. I use my knee lift on mine. I'm, I know that's a surprise all the time. Yeah, totally shocked. This is my shocked face. Mm -hmm. Yes. Looks a lot like your serious face. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you do what? Okay, um, so there is, uh, yeah, it's a smaller, so it doesn't have that five inch throat is really the, the big, mm -hmm. the big mm -hmm. physical difference. Um, and then there's the, the air threading things and, yeah. and those kinds of, so those new technical things that they changed yeah. um, when they came out with the and Triumph. I would say, this is gonna sound strange. If you're a garment sewer, and you really just you just do garments and you you're don't hemming and you're con and you're making the construction. Your construction. The accolade is a perfect machine. Absolutely. If you are like a crafter, dabbler, I don't really sew clothes, but I really want to embellish things, you need the triumph. Because you're gonna want that space. Yeah. So um 
I know some of you have heard this before and I apologize ahead of time. I started with, at the time, what was the accolade. It was called the Evolution at mm -hmm. the time. And I had it for a couple of years and I, you know, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it. Yep. Um, and so it made sense at the time. And it's a beautiful machine and it sews perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to the point where I wanted to be able to sew farther than that much from the edge of a piece of fabric. Yep. Um, because it it's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do I need it? Well, no, but what does need have to do with these things? Nothing. Um, so um, I trade it up. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that is certainly an option as well. Um, if you are in that exact same boat as me and you're like, okay, I really want to get started, but mm -hmm. I'm not quite there yet. It's a great place. It is, it is an absolutely honey of a machine. It is, yeah. it is a beautiful, beautiful machine. So that is the eight thread serger. Um, that is just a little bit smaller than the one that we're sewing on. That also comes with the rolling bag and a foot kit. That one has a few less feet. That one is a 16. Um, but again, a bulk of the the basic ones, maybe not some of the the extra, mm -hmm. extra bonus extra. ones um, that really are easier if you have more throat space, if you will, to do some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but wonderful. And they both of them come in a, a nice bag mm -hmm. um, with everything labeled and sorted. And it's yep. really, really nice. And um, all of them come with an inspiration guide, which is really, really great as yes. well. Um, that is one of the things that Baby Lock does so very well mm -hmm. is um, their kind of like a manual education. written for someone. It really is a manual, but it's like written in language that a that sewer would we, use instead of the um, engineer that wrote built the, the technical machine. Yeah. writing. Yes. Yeah. It's it's really really well done. So um, those are the two eighth thread serger packages, and the cost for the Accolade MSRP is forty five hundred. Total value for that package is $58.99, and it is on sale 25% um, off, I think that yep. says, for $44.25. And then you do get $200 in the Boo Bucks to play with for that as well. And then the other two machines that we do have specials on are the Victory and the Euphoria. The Victory is our four thread um, with air... Um, in the loopers and auto, auto tensions. tensions. And then the Euphoria is our air in the loopers. It is our cover hem machine. So cover it's only. basically mm -hmm. um, on the same frame as the Triumph. So you get that five inch throat. Um, and so it gives you a lot of playroom to be able to do all of those cover hem stitches that we've been talking about mm -hmm. on the Triumph. Um, and it is on sale for $19.99. And the real big bonus with that one is that we are doing 40% off feet mm -hmm. for the Euphoria. And that is for May and June. And of course, the last four days of April. <laughs> we'll throw that in too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, and then the Victory is on sale for $24.99 and you get $500 in the Lou Bucks. So wonderful, wonderful um, packages. The, um, there is a foot kit for the Victory, but it's not as big, so... Um, yeah, you definitely would have the money to you would have, purchase that with your Labu Box and, if you wanted So you to. can pick and choose, um, you know, what it is that you want. We thought that would be the better route for you to go, mm -hmm. depending you could get on luggage what you want you to do with, yep. you know, how do you want to use your serger? Because maybe extra feet isn't in your, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of people buy that fourth thread for very, very different reasons. So we didn't want to assume. So yep. you get to pick what you, you want. So pick. we did the $500 in the Boo Bucks on that one. Mm -hmm. So um, those are our specials. If I click that yep. one, I'm not going to blow anything You're up. You're not. Right? Nope. <laughs> All right. Ready? Go back to Here sleep. we go. Woohoo. Okay. Oh, look, it's different. Oh, dear. All right. Which button do I? This... It, the one to the left. Next one. That one. There you go. Woohoo! I didn't blow anything up. You didn't. Okay, so let's talk about that foot you've been playing with. Yeah, this is the piping foot. This foot is a lot of fun to play with. Do you want to so show that? So the back of this guy has a huge groove in it, and that is so that you can basically um, slide your cording right through the groove. So it will keep that in line so that you get a nice, clean, straight, beautiful mm -hmm. cording um, stitch. And it makes 
oops, see, small window, my bad, so sorry. Um, I'm still learning this thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can make piping in a breeze. So mm -hmm. let's show you guys how this works. Yeah. So what do you got? You need this stuff? Um, I, yeah, I will need some cording. So Not that. you can get you a that. couple of different sizes of cordings. Um, the, the size that we bought um, fits in this groove perfectly. Um, but the reality is, after we played with this, we kind it's, of felt like it, thick. it might have been just a little bit thick for our particular project. Um, I had some slightly smaller stuff at home, which I think is on... Nope. You have it, here. I think. Which is this. It's really hard to show. So you can see like almost half it is um and so i did a sample of the piping with both sizes um they're cute either way it really does make nice piping this is probably a little bit sloppy in the foot but it i didn't have any issues putting it together so uh it seemed to fill up the space so when you go to sew the piping on it kind of um removes any slop mm-hmm it, it fills in your gaps if you had any. Yep. Um, so it's very forgiving. It is very <laughs> it's forgiving. extremely forgiving when you're putting it all together. It really does um, kind of fix all of that for you. So um, this is, um, one more time for anybody who got lost in the conversation that we just had, we are threaded with a four thread overlock. And um, are you wide, what are you on? Um, I am on narrow, actually. You are narrow. Okay. So I'm still at that um, the narrowest position, which is basically five, five. and a half millimeters. Yep. Okay. Um, when you've got two needles. Yep. All right. So what I like to do is I like to put the piping in first. So yep. I like to put my foot up and um, slide this underneath first, and I like to put it in that groove. There we go. And then um, I put my foot down so that it holds my piping in Puts place. My foot I down. put my foot down. That's right. But that will just basically clamp that in place mm -hmm. so that it won't slide out as you're manipulating your fabric around it. Mm -hmm. And then I take my piece of um, uh, binding or bias strip. So Let me give um, you that one so you yeah. can see a little better. This one, I like to use bias. And the reason that I like to use bias is because the. Um, it lays flatter. Um, it's a lot more forgiving and you really don't have to be, like it, sometimes it twists a little bit and it's not perfect when it goes on, but because it's biased, it lays it, it perfect. It lays nicely and either it, way. It doesn't matter. It, it, if it's not biased, then sometimes if you twist it, it starts to like turn and it doesn't lay flat and then you get wrinkles on it. You get a little pucker. Yep, no puckers with this. All right, so I am going to um, just wrap this around like so. And you don't have to be exact on this. You want to be fairly close with where you're at, like where you're meeting the two sides. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cut that side off, aren't we? We are. Yeah, but it's all so going to start trimming. I'm going to leave this camera on instead of the other because all the action is happening on your side over there. Okay. Um, so we're going to leave that over there. So you're going to see that stripe fabric is coming down there. And basically, it's pinching here. Mm -hmm and the excess is falling off over there. Yep. So I'll switch over here in a minute so you can see it coming out back here. But and so, so right now, yeah, I, you can see what she's doing. Exactly, and I don't, um, I, don't, I don't iron this in half first. I want this to just be loose in here. And I literally just roll it with my fingers so just it's kind of- Just to kind of keep it pushed It kind of nests left. over there. And then I literally hold it up and I kind of guide it into that little channel. All and right. I'm, I'm paying really no attention to what is going on over here. So again, um, we want to just make sure that the cord is staying over here, mm -hmm. not going that way so that there's enough fabric to cover both sides. So you can see that it's coming out the back and it's got that beautiful catch there. And we have a four thread over here. And it's wrapped itself right around that cording beautifully right there.
And I mean, it's really, it's taunt, it's perfect. So very, very easy. Yep. It is literally the, the machine and that foot are doing all of that work for you. You are not really doing much of anything. Nope. Um, you do want to keep an eye on it. You yep. don't want to just let it go willy nilly, mm -mm. but it is literally. Um, yep. And we have a couple of questions. So um, Barbara asked, is it better to use a piping foot or a cording foot? I am essentially using the names interchangeably here. Yep. Um, we have a package. Grab that foot over there. You can get. There's my window. <laughs> a, there is a five millimeter and a three millimeter cording foot. Um, I think the three millimeter cording foot is a waste. I wouldn't spend the money on that because honestly, if your cording is a little bit smaller, it's still going to nest in here and you'll appreciate having that extra space when you actually go to sew your cording to something because that sort of fills in the area as well. This is also the foot that we use for um, putting our zippers in if we're going to kind of cheat and use that. It's going to keep those teeth right in that groove, mm -hmm. just like we keep the... the um, so, the, yes, uh, Missy, uh, your 5 millimeter cording foot is your best option for piping. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And, Barb, my blade is up. So, this is the stuff so that... So, everything was falling off to the right. This is because the blade was removing that excess so that only thing that's left and hanging on here is the four thread. Mm -hmm. Which is what pre-made piping looks like, yep. um, except for you got a prettier stitch on the outside. So it's, it's held a little bit better. Um, so the thing that I would like to point out when I am working with this, um, I usually cut my bias strips about two inches. Yes, there is waste and I'm cutting the majority of this off, but you will appreciate having wiggle room because sometimes it does twist Sometimes and it moves a little bit on you and not having to sit there and like hold it nervously because you're running out of fabric exactly. is such a breeze to be able to just let it go. It's worth the waste of the fabric. And we're not talking like huge. No. Not even, yeah, it was yeah, it's totally, totally worth, worth it. this <laughs> amount of waste Yes. to just let it go. Yep, absolutely. So cut it bigger, um, let your blade trim it down. Um, and you will be much happier with your end result. Absolutely. And, and like I said, I, I would have cut this fabric on the bias um, regardless because of the stripe and I just like how they look, but bias strips do make nicer piping pieces. So you will appreciate how, um, how flat they lay when you're finished. Um, <laughs> where is, here's it's, the camera. I'm like, there's a camera <laughs> which somewhere. Which one am I going to? Right, it's really flat, it's straight, it's not curving, it's not twisting. Um, because you've got that little bit of stretch in there, it's really, it, it does make wraps all the difference. It does it on its own. Yes. So now, um, we have some pre-made, I have some pre-made You have some, I someplace. believe. Yes. All right. I have some red over here, but I think you've got other. I do. I have some that's a little bit skinnier here. I've got a chunk. Right, and? <laughs> Got something you're gonna put it on? I do. All right, so we have that cording foot still on the machine, and we've got our pre-made cording. You can, of course, purchase that, as we were saying, but how simple is that to make? Um, and comparative to um, purchasing it, and this way it, you can decide the, the print and, you know, so on and so forth. It's going to match everything perfectly because mm -hmm. you can make it out of whatever you would like. Absolutely. So how much fun is that, right? Lots of fun. Lots and lots of fun. So, so um, using the Insel Bright on the back and one of my fabrics, uh, one of my printed fabrics on the top, yep. I'm going to um, use the same foot to attach the piping. I just want to say a couple of um, a couple of my tips that I've learned using the piping foot over the years. If I were not using Insel Bright, um, I would make sure that my fabric is on the bottom 
and um, because it does sometimes stretch and distort. Uh, you wouldn't want to have your fabric on top and your piping piece on the bottom um, just because it's it's harder to work with it that way. So um, make sure you're kind of paying attention to what you are doing. If you are sewing this particular casserole carrier and you were not putting piping on, I would sew with my inso bright to the top and my fabric to the bottom. But because I'm putting piping in, I'm going to sew um, with my fabric pieces up. So I would, if I were not putting piping in, I would be sewing with Upside, the opposite, opposite the direction. opposite direction. Um, having my feed dogs on the fabric it's below, it's going to give you more even feed. It would it would prevent any sort of stretch that might happen because what's going to happen when I get down to the bottom is there is a small likelihood that the fabric will have shifted a little bit, and I might have to trim a little piece because it won't be perfectly square with this. Um, we do have the ability to adjust the presser foot pressure mm -hmm. on our machine a little bit. So that can help, but sometimes it still wants to shift a little bit because I don't want to sew over pins right. or do anything like that. You could spray base this a little bit if you wanted, but um, I'm just going to go for it. I know that surprises everybody. Mm -hmm. I actually did spray base, um, and I did it the way the directions said. Mm -hmm. So I did do this in two separate steps instead of the way that you're showing, mm -hmm. um, which is... I spray basted these two layers together and then sewed these two layers together with a four thread, mm -hmm. then added. So it, I took more steps to get there. Mm -hmm. um, the end result is going to be the same. But if you are concerned about shifting and want to have less pieces loose and, <clears throat> and moving around because you're not as comfortable um, in front of your serger, yep. um, you certainly can break that down and take a few more baby steps to get there and still accomplish the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, my watch is super glad because I'm moving, moving my hands. Moving, 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 okay. <laughs> moving, moving, moving. All right, so we are going to, um, come here, there you go. Um, we are going to show what's going on over here mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna go over there. All right, so I am going to turn my blade off. And the reason that I put my blade down is because I really don't want to start trimming um, the, the, the surged part of my piping. So my blade is going down, it says locked. So I'm going to put my needles up and um, I'm actually gonna clear everything out so that I can slide my fabric in a little bit more. Um, so if you turn your hand wheel in the opposite direction that you normally turn it to, it will unlock it. So when your hand wheel is moving towards you, it's making stitches, and if you turn your hand wheel to the back, do that a little slower so nobody gets seasick, <laughs> um, then you will be able to um, untie the stitches and you'll be able to get everything back on top. The reason that I want to do it like this is because I want to be able to slide my fabric up and my piping in, and if my needles are down and I've created a stitch, it makes it a little bit harder. There's basically a little thread wall in mm -hmm. your way. So I'm gonna line my fabric up and I'm using the mark that is on the side of my plate here, which happens to be the inside edge of this toe because I don't wanna stitch way over here because I've turned my blade off. My blade would be right on this edge. So once I have this positioned where I want it to be, then I'm gonna slide my piping underneath. So this foot has a little bit of spring action, so I'm just sliding it in. And I wanna make sure that I leave a little bit of a tail thread at the end. And once I have everything um, where I want it to be, I'm gonna put my needles down. That's gonna help me hold everything in place and sort of I can tug on everything and it won't fall out on me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work slowly, making sure that I keep everything lined up. And then we're gonna work through the process when we get down to the corners. So one more time, there is excess out here. You wanna make sure you have that. Don't start right at the edge. Mm -hmm. um, Marilyn asked if this can be used on a By Annie project. Um, certainly, if you are adding piping to something and you can get it underneath your surge, uh, your foot, then you can definitely do this. And you're gonna see how easy this is. So you are lining up the edge of the fabric, mm -hmm. the insole bright, and the edge of that four thread. I am. 
and then following that guide line on the edge over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, when you get to the corner, there's a couple of different ways that you can do your corner. Um, you can clip in a few times to turn your corner. Um, you can also use, I use a stiletto a lot when I am stitching. When I said stiletto this morning, you guys will all think this is hysterical. Dave's like, do you have everything? I'm like, yeah, I got my stiletto. He's like, what kind of class are you and Lisa teaching? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm <Ice> like, pick. <laughs> uh, actually, he was thinking like shoes. So the stiletto, stiletto heels. heels. He's That's like, no why fun. do you need shoes for your class? And I'm like, oh, it's not that kind of class. <laughs> no, nope. I'm doing a catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'm placing my stiletto here so that I can kind of figure out where I need to turn. So I've got this about, um, I don't know, it's just a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch, so it's really just visual. And I can see what I'm trying to do here is kind of is make- get that corner. A, yeah, and I'm kind of looking to make a 90 degree angle. So you can clip into this if you want to. I honestly just leave it like this. So um, what I do is I just place my tool in the corner here and I'm going to just stitch up. And you'll be amazed at how this just works. So I'm getting close here. I can see that it's picking, um, it's pushing my fabric just a little bit. So I'm just going to slide that piece over and shove it underneath that foot. And then. So what we're doing here is making room for the corner so that we're not sewing the piping into the corner so that when we turn the corner, we actually have piping where we want it for the next side. Mm -hmm. So you can see there that she has sewn all the way off the edge. Right, and I've got my and piping And we turned. have loose piping and it has actually turned the corner. So now we're gonna just pick up that four thread and come down the next edge and line up the piping now with this side. And we're gonna rinse and repeat that all the way around. Mm -hmm. Again, if you are more comfortable, you can snip into the side of the piping so that it kind of turns by itself. Um, and even if you do that, you're still gonna to wanna to hold it in place. <laughs> so either way, you're gonna be holding it in place. Mm -hmm. And you don't, this is biased, so you don't, don't want to it. tug because right. it will draw in. I'm just trying to get it to lay flat. Hi, Dad. <laughs> and really the key to making your piping lay flat is that bias edge and not tugging. Those are the keys. And again, if you're, um, if you're a tugger, use a tool because you'll be less likely to tug and you'll just gently keep guide. everything lined up that's right and so again i'm getting that close and i'm going to use my tool and i'm just going to kind of put it in and turn my corner if i wanted to turn my corner if you do this you can kind of tell where you need to so you could just take your scissors and you can just clip in so you can clip once or you can clip a couple times so then i've got my corners clipped and it's a little bit in there i know you're still off to the side yeah. but at least it's zoomed in a little I bit i think they'll be able to see when i get down to the end and i take that so again i want to make sure that this stays where it is and it doesn't push so i'm just holding this with my tool and there you can see my clipped corner so you can see there's a clip there a clip there so I did and then it's got a little gap so then it will lay over this way um, it doesn't like I said you can pull you can tug whatever you would like either or will work and I'm just getting everything lined back up I really missed that knee lift. Sorry. <laughs> There's not room for that here. No, I'm not even remotely. I got you a lot of room, but I didn't get you that much. I'm at, and I'm not, I, there is no way that it's gonna span that distance. <laughs> so this was the first time that I had ever really used it 
and actually applied it. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no expectation that it was going to come out very well. <laughs> it and, really. And I, I was very pleased with how it looked when I turned it. I was like, look at that. It looks like it's supposed to. Yeah, it, um, it's not too difficult. It really is. And as I was saying earlier, it's, um, it's, it's nice because the machine is just working, so you can concentrate on getting the pieces where you want them to be. You don't have to worry about what settings things are on, where things are at, you know, is this working, is that working? Everything's gonna work. You just have to look at where that fabric edge is and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And everything is going to work out perfectly. Yep. Um, and knowing that I didn't have to worry about that made this no stress. Mm -hmm. So even though I'd never done it before, I just had fun with it because I didn't have to stress about where things were sitting or any of that. Yep. And I can see underneath here that my fabric has sort of flown the coop. <laughs> so I've um, gone a little bit past where I want to be. So... I know that I still need to be back here, so I'm going to just sew off. And I'm not going to clip into this corner, and then I'm going to trim that in a second, so when I pull it off. So I'm visualizing here, guys. That is where my corner is supposed to be. And because I don't have my blade on, right, you can see it kind of it it grew pushed. past. So um, we can just take our scissors and uh, trim up that, that edge so that it's not in my way. I know you don't want those. There's these. These better? Yeah. Whoops. As I take off your hand. Nah, didn't, you didn't need that. Need that for I didn't anything, need that did finger. It's all good. So the reason that I don't want to put my blade back up is because I don't want it to trim all of this edging here, it just makes a mess. It does. <laughs> I can vouch for that because I didn't do it right away. I was like, wow, <laughs> that's that's a lot of frayed thread there. Yes. All right. Stick this back in. And it's very forgiving. It is. It, it really, really is. And we're almost to our last corner. And then we're going to talk about how to join those pieces. So this is going to be, um, again, this would be the outside part. So whatever your lining piece is, is not going to have um, the binding sewn on. This is going to be the outside fabric. So whichever outside fabric you have chosen is going to be what you would be sewing this onto. And you're gonna have two pieces of that. You're gonna have this piece and you're gonna have the other rectangle. Mm -hmm. um, this short and fat one and the other long and skinny one. So you will be doing this twice. Mm -hmm. So um, lots of practice. Yep. <laughs> and so I'm going to take like, I don't know, five or six stitches just to turn my corner here. And then I'm going to pull it out and we're going to talk about how we connect these two pieces. So again, a couple of stitches. Now I'm going to put my foot up. I'm turning it backwards because I want to release the threads. And I'm going to slide this out. There we go. It's sticking on my little stitch finger back there. There we go. All right. So if you were really concerned about these two end pieces, you could certainly take your two top pieces and your two bottom pieces and you could um, just tie a knot there and clip those threads out if you wanted to. Um, that's completely up to you. You have- You're gonna sew over that again. So yeah, it's, it's going to be stuck inside. So I totally would not worry about it. But if it if it bothers you, um, you can just tie a little knot. Voila. And then clip that out of your way. So you don't have to worry about it. 
All right, so there's a couple of different ways that you can join your, um, your pieces here. So you can overlap them by just bringing one down. So I would put my bottom piece down here and then I could put the other one over top of it and then I could just surge across. I could um, pull some of this out. I could butt them up essentially like we did in our corners. So I could turn them this way and, um, and butt them up. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, do you want to show on sure. that camera over there? They might be able to see it a little bit easier. So mine have been sewn in, but um, I did the butt them up method mm -hmm. and I did trim into the corner here. So you can see that the edges, yeah, I'm gonna. I forgot my samples. Oh, um, so right here, I did that trim in and then I turned those pieces. And then when I sewed over top of it and came past, it did the um, trimming off. So my excess went away and it sewed everything together. So that is um, those pieces there. And then here is my second piece. Oh, where, oh, where did I hide that little guy? There he is. Um, and so, like I said, you will do that twice. And um, there is the second piece. So I did the same attachment on both. And that was basically doing this and then sewing over where my fingers would be. <laughs> I didn't cut my fingers off though. Um, so basically where the fingers are would be the excess of the piping and the blade would remove that because mm -hmm. you would turn your blade on if you had lowered it yep. to remove that excess there. So. And then on this one, so what I did was if you have ever done like machine binding where you tucked an edge under, so I removed the, um, the piping I, I took my stitches out, removed the piping, and so I just had fabric, and I just folded the fabric on an angle, and I laid the piping piece in. So um, you have a little bit of a gap here where they don't sort of fit perfectly together, but there's a less bulk in the seam. Right. And then because it is definitely bulk. Yeah, it's definitely bulky. And on this one, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. So on this one, I I just smushed them in on top of each other, like so. So you've got a couple of- And that of, was the crossing them over. That was the crossing them over and then stitching over top of one. So you've got a couple of different options. If I had my way and I could choose every time, what I would do is I would pull out those stitches and I would lay the fabric in that track. So that's what I'm gonna show you here because um, I think that makes a, a slightly cleaner version. And what I do is the fabric. Nope, wrong one. Uh, My bad, sorry guys. <laughs> that's all right, the fabric that's on the top is the one that I want to have the piping in, and the fabric that's on the bottom is the one that I want to pull the piping out of. But I wanna make sure that it lays, so I'm, I need to be joining um, sort of in the general vicinity of where I first started. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna cut a little bit of this excess tail thread off. So I'm gonna cut this here and then. Really? Did you break my favorite scissors? Apparently, oh, there's a really big nick right there. Apparently. She broke it in my scissors? I she dropped one pair, broke the other. I'm running out of scissors, You're running Sarah. out of scissors. I got a seam ripper in here, I think. <laughs> nope, I got two stilettos. What? I got seam ripper. I got. I'll take that. Uh, okay. I, I got really tiny scissors. <laughs> you want these? <laughs> so um, I am going to um, pull out these stitches, and obviously there's more than one way that you can do that. I usually just take this at the top here and uh, pull it out. And then the pressure. I'm telling you. Right? Serger stitches are so fun to remove. Yeah. So fast, too. 
All right, so I am pulling those stitches out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my piping and I'm going to clip that piping out. Done, so it's no longer in that spot. Okay, and I can pull some of those extra stitches out because I don't need those anymore. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to trim this piece here where I want that to overlap. So I want that to be, I'm just trying to feel where my piping is. So it's right here, this is a, uh, this is a very, um, very technical mathematical way. Yep, so now I am- Take your uh, thumb in there and go, yep, right there. Right there. So now this piece will then butt in to this piece right here. And then I'm gonna take this piece that I have over here and I'm gonna trim it just a little bit. And then this is where it gets really complicated. I'm gonna take this end and I'm gonna fold it in like this. And then I'm gonna lay this in the track and then I'm gonna stitch over top of it. And that's um, my super complicated method of doing this. So it just pulls kind of like uh, binding. It is kind <laughs> of like binding. Um, it, you really are just um, laying. Where are you going? Just trying to. It doesn't want to move. You, you screwed those really, really I know. Really there tight. we go. We can kind of see. So I've got this on a diagonal way down here. And then I'm just going to lay my piping piece in here. And I am going to fold that over top and then I'm gonna make sure that I work that in there. So I didn't pull quite enough out, so I'm gonna trim that up just a little bit more. Ta -da. I want that to lay in there. Nice and flat. Nice and flat-ish. <laughs> and then I will sew over top of that. So this is where um, one of those little, if you have any of those handy dandy wonder clips, this is that spot that will make that a lot easier. So I'm just gonna clip that in to help hold that. Then I'm gonna go back to my machine, lay everything back in there, use my fancy stiletto that is not a high heel and pull that in and hold that in place. And then I'm gonna stitch. And of course, we can trim all of these excess threads out of our way. And then I'm gonna overlap that stitching just a little bit. And I'm gonna pull that out. And there I have my piping. And like I said, sometimes you get a little bit of a, an extra little snippet there, but I think that is still less noticeable than the big bulky piece. And, and not that difficult. Not that difficult at all. It takes a couple of seconds. And of course, when you're at home and you're near all of your pieces and parts, um, you know, you can make this look. And your scissors don't break. Your and... scissors don't break and you've got all of your favorite tools. Um, you can make this work a little bit easier. But this is essentially how you would put your, um, your, uh, your piping on. And uh, now this is prepared. All right, so we have a couple questions. Number one, Ms. Dana, if you just serge the piping and the other two layers rather than making cording and then serge the layers, kind of like one step. So you do need to make the piping separate because of the excess fabric, you wouldn't know where um, that would be at. So that does need to be separate. You don't have to do all of this part in one step. You can do those separated out if you wanted, but you, the piping needs to be made as a separate step. Unfortunately, you can't blend that into this 
at the same time. Yeah, it would be really hard. It um, would be a lot to juggle. Right, because if you were trying, I, and I get what she's trying to say. So she's yep. wondering if, can she just sandwich the piping with the fabric in all at the same time? The problem with doing that is A, you would have to keep that piping exactly where you want it to be. And if you had another piece of fabric over top of this, you, you wouldn't were, know where the edge is. You, you're literally blind, yes. So I would imagine when you pulled that off, um, it would be a little bit iffy. Now, if I were only going straight, right. if I were only going straight and I didn't have this in there and I wasn't turning a corner, I could put two layers of fabric in there. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and go ahead and, and absolutely do that because I could be trimming off the outside edge. And, and then it, if you had a specific size, you could trim it after the fact to getting it to the size that you need. But since this is a specific size, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't know where it was trimming underneath and you would have to have the blade on mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be able to see your piece underneath. But it's a yep. great idea. Yep. Um, absolutely. Always looking for shortcuts. Everybody is. Absolutely. absolutely. All right. Um, next question. Is this easier, harder, or the same as doing it? I feel like I'm playing a game. Yes. <laughs> um, this is as doing it on, adventure. I know, right? <laughs> as doing it on a sewing machine, in your opinion. Um, I think this is easier. Yeah, I would make piping a um, hundred times to one on my serger. serger before I would make it on my sewing machine. So, I mean, there are feet that you can put on your sewing machine that kind of do the same types of things, but the stitches that this does versus the stitches, um, this is way, by far easier, in my opinion. Mine too, yeah. So. I would definitely pick this choice every day of the week. Every time. Um, now, if you're... And, and sewing the piping to something like this, is it really is very easy. I mean, I could have done it in, in twice the amount of time or half the, half amount, the, of the time. amount of time that I showed you guys, but it's not really, um, you just wouldn't have seen anything. So right. you, you kind of have to go a little bit slower in order for the um, for you guys to sort of understand what's going on, but it's not hard. And, and I gotta say, even having not done it before, it this this step, is a very fast step. Yeah. It, it goes very, very fast. Um, the uh, it's, it's not a difficult piece. Trying to talk while you're doing it and say, this is what you wanna do and stop and show, it makes it look harder. It is not. It um, Like I said before, I didn't have a clue what I was doing because I hadn't done it before. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was very, it made sense. Once you see it in front of you, are like, Oh, that's what they mean. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. I just need to round this corner. Absolutely. <laughs> and I and need that corner to then line up when I get to the next one. Right. So. And and then to finish this, you you can then sew your top piece of material to this. Now, yep. I technically could have sewn my top piece all at, at the, the same, same time, time. Um, but that is, and I would have if I if I hadn't had this. Um, that yep. makes it a little bit squishier. And again, because this doesn't move the same way that my fabric does, it sort of skews your project. So you kind of have End to- End up with a little extra. Yeah, you, you kind of have to judge that. But essentially now, um, if we are going to sew this on, we would need to sew three and a half sides. We need to leave an opening in order to turn this. Right. Um, so I'm gonna recommend about a five inch on, in your instructions. Exactly. And so I did two different... Um, Which, this is one. That one and this, this one. Okay. So I I left two different openings just so that you could see the difference. So on this long and skinny one, yeah, maybe. Which one? I, Us? Yeah. Okay. All right. So on this one... I left a small opening in the back, which right is there. right here, to turn, because I fit, that was plenty of space for me to turn. I was able to use the piping to kind of pull it out. It's really cute. The piping is perfect. Everything went together exactly as planned. But this piping is a teeny tiny bit smaller. That one's a little bit it's, thinner. It's yep. the thinner one. And then on this version, I left one whole end open. So, and that's where I have it clipped. Um, I think if I were making a bunch of these, I think that it would be easier to leave one whole, 
sometimes when you have a small opening, the fabric stretches and it distorts as you're turning it. It does. And it never fits. It in doesn't that opening. fit back. But no. when you leave the whole top open here, um, it does fit in. So you you don't really have to worry about it. So what I did was I came right, I came just around the corner on each side, like an inch in and then left the whole bottom part opening. Um, and then I just folded it in and and, um, and tucked and it in it, yep. and clipped it in. So you can see um, at the top here, it's all open. And um, because I surged along that top edge first, I know it gives me that nice area where, to, where I, I should fold it in. Right. And because we can either sew this closed on our sewing machine. We can sew it closed on with the chain with stitch. The chain stitch. I, I, I liked this version better. And that is, if I were making these, um, that, that's what I would choose to do every time versus the smaller opening, um, just because of that stretch and distortion. Yep. So um, does I, hopefully that makes sense. You just plop your top on and you are essentially doing exactly the same thing that we did before. Right. So a um, couple of different options in your instructions, depending upon how you want to put your um, piece together. Yes. Um, the next thing we're going to show is um, we are going to switch over to the cover hem side and mm -hmm. show you how to thread that and then do a couple different pieces for this. Mm -hmm. So there's handles and there's some ties that we're going to make. Um, and depending upon where you want to do that, so I did it one way, Sarah's gonna do it one way, and the instructions tell you another way. So yes. um, there's, depending upon how you want them done would be dependent upon when you're going to insert them. Exactly. So when you're going to make your sandwich be a whole piece. Mm -hmm. So definitely matters yeah. how you're going to have it finished when you're going to insert your handles. Yep. Um, if you don't have a machine there. that has cover hem, you're not going to be making your handles right. like we are. So you could have had them made. You would have had that done. Right. Or, or, or you could be using anything like that. So yep. on Lisa's. Ribbons or whatnot. Yeah. So. On Lisa's version, she, um, before she put her top piece on. Ooh, where'd it go? Um, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> Before she put her top layer on and sewed all the way around, she tucked her handles in. So um, in the instructions, they have you just taking a 15 inch piece of whatnots. And this seems very, very small today. I guess that's as big as I get. Um, the, um, the 15 inch piece and coming in and then attaching that basically um, onto your your piece. So you're just sewn right here. This is the this is all that there is and there's just a little piece coming in here. So when Sarah and I talked, we were like, you know, this is supposed to hold, you know, the best dish at the party, right? Because if I bake it, it's going to be the best thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we don't want my, my handles to fall off as I'm carrying it in because it would ruin the party, right? Mm -hmm. So Lisa would go to a party and she would bring something. I totally We've would. determined that I won't, wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did have that conversation as well. Um, so instead, um, we talked about strengthening the handles, though, and the, that it made absolute sense to do so. So for mine, um, I didn't want my handles on the outside, but I did want to strengthen it. So my handle actually runs all the way mm -hmm. through, around, and then all the way through again. So I figured out the length that I needed. I sewed it together, and then I sewed it in place. So mine is inserted in between my lining and my... Um, basically the insole bright batting itself. So I have a super strong handle that's going to hang on. It's not mm -hmm. going anywhere. It's not. Um, it's it's in there and it's going to hold whatever I tend to want to put in here. So um, with the ties, I did not do that because that's not actually holding any weight. That's just keeping the inner parts. Um, so that I did not take the extra time to do that. I just sewed those onto the edges like the instructions said to do. Um, but we are going to talk now about the um, cover hem side. Yeah. And 
we're going to re-thread for that. So let's talk about how to do that. I love to cut the thread. It's just such a wonderful feeling, isn't right? it? It is. I don't know what is so great about yep. that, but it is surely a great, great feeling. All right, so there is the machine. And I know you guys can't see the thread spools on the back, but this is an eight thread serger. So we've got um, four looper positions and we have um, four needle positions. So is that right? No. I'm Three, sorry. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. We have three looper positions and five needle positions. That's what I meant to say. I'm not that, really sure where my brain went. I was thinking four and four and, and that's... Yeah. Doesn't matter. The correct numbers are three loopers and five needles. So now you can kind of see the, the edges mm -hmm. of those. So right now you can see that we have four in the back corner over there. Um, position isn't as super important where they're placed on the thread stand as it is where they're placed in the machine. So when like when we did the wave stitch, it was it mattered which slot it went in in these guys here because that made a difference on how the thread was being pulled. Mm -hmm. So that matters, but where it's actually sitting on the thread tree isn't as important. Nope. Um, so don't stress yourself too much about, well, it's in the wrong place back, but it, that's not a huge thing. No. So sh you can see she's repositioning um, her threads and we're now going to have four white, I'm assuming. Yeah. So the one all the way to the right there, right at the front is going to be the looper thread right there. And we're going to move to the far left three and those are going to be our three needles. So we are also going to have to move the needles, of course, the physical needles, as well as the threads <laughs> where they go. And right now we have needles one and two in the overlock position, and we are going to move them over to needles one, two, and three in the cover chain position. So we're gonna find our red handled hex screwdriver again, and we're gonna swap those out. So we're going to remove <laughs> those um, two needles and slide them over and then add one more. So I'm gonna let you do that. And right. I'm gonna disappear for half a second. Okay. And I will be right back while she's changing some needles. So um, we're going to uh, change our needles and we're also going to um, thread the machine for our cover hem part. So the cover hem portion, my looper is gonna be on the side over here. I'm just moving my tools. So I am going to open my door. Um, we do need to replace this door here. There is a little um, groove on the bottom of this. So I'm gonna just pull that out. I like to just get it out of my way. We will be putting this guy on so that we have a place to actually um, a flat bed to stitch. So a couple of things that we need to do, I'm just pulling um, the excess thread out of the machine here. We need to put our upper looper down. So I'm gonna turn this dial to the down position and I'm gonna turn my hand wheel. I like to do this um, to start because once I get this machine into the threading part, I won't have the ability to do that at all. So now I'm going to turn my machine to threading. I'm gonna turn my hand wheel again and it's going to lock the tubes. So we're gonna be using the one way down here, which is for um, the chain and the cover part. And then I've got my needles here. So I'm actually gonna be working with three needles. So um, I'm just moving them. I like to do the needles when I don't have the foot on. It does make it a little bit easier for me to find the position where my needles go. There's a little opening underneath. So I'm coming down and then coming straight up and then I'm just gonna tighten. So down and then straight up. And tighten, then I'm gonna grab that third needle and again, straight down, straight up. And my needles are in. 
and I'm going to work on threading this. So um, just like a regular sewing machine, it's important that we make sure that when we thread the machine, we are threading it with our foot up. So this happens to be my lever for my cover hem part. Just for purposes of you being able to see this area over here, I'm going to put this down. But as soon as I get the thread in this track, I am going to pull it back up. So here's my thread. I need to come through this little loop on the side. I'm gonna pull it down and then I need to come behind this little metal guide. So the thread is going behind there and then I need to get it into this track. Once I've got it started in that track, I'm gonna pull that up. I want to make sure that I actually get my thread seated in the little disc area that's over here. There's a nice little thread guide over here that just keeps everything um, from, it just keeps the thread from basically marring up your plastic. Um, and again, I've got my chain over here, so I am just trimming off that end. And I'm going to put that right in to this guy. How are we doing? Pretty good. Pulling this, and then I'm pushing this. Yep, and then that is going to come over into this little cubby here. So I'm going to pull it out on the camera over here. You can see I've got thread in this little basket. So, um, but I, I'm just going to leave it in there. Resist the urge. I know I said I always pull my thread up to the top. Resist the urge. Yeah, that just, needs to sit there. <laughs> just let, leave it be right there and know that it is in exactly where it needs to be. <laughs> yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> <sighs> All right. We knew it would someday. <laughs> He totally did. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I'm My... so sorry. Oh, all right. So oh. we've got this threaded. Um, we know that we have our looper in, and now we are going to go ahead and we're going to thread our needles. So um, I did a little video on this. I haven't posted it to YouTube yet, but I will. Um, I think if you go to that camera, if I turn the machine ever so slightly and you get a little wider, will they be able to see that back part? Wider would be helpful then. There, it's kind of, there it is. All right, so um, this guy right here is where we need to get the needles um, threaded. So um, I always start with the left because the opening is on the left, but you could start with the right if you wanted to. So I'm gonna grab um, my chain needle one, which is my leftmost needle, and um, I'm going to lay it in the track where um, the needle goes. So it's on the leftmost side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it down here and I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom and I'm doing this completely blind here. And then I'm just gonna pop that over to the right and then it's in the track. And that is literally all you need yep. to do. There's a little pop. I don't know if you guys could hear it, but when it clicks over, there's a little pop there. So one of the things when they changed over from the Triumph to the Triumph from the Ovation is they changed this little guy right here. Um, and it, it works a little bit easier than the path. Um, it, it's very, very simple little guy to change. Um, but they did revamp that a little bit and made that just a little bit easier. Um, so are we okay? Yeah, I was just, I wasn't going to turn the air threader on for all three. Um, I laid it in the little hole and then when I let go, it popped out. So I was trying to grab it with my tweezers, but of course there was nothing there to There's grab. There's nothing there to grab. No. So yeah, um, if any of you have innovation out there and are like, yeah, I know that's super hard. Um, I don't remember how much it is, but it's not super expensive. Um, but it's definitely worth it. You can purchase just this little part and it's attached by a screwdriver <laughs> and just a little screw back there. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy to swap out. If that's something that you're interested in, let us know. We can help you out with that. Yep. Or, or you can buy a new serger. But <laughs> You can, yes. Um, but you can also have him change that out. Like yeah, when he you can bring do it, it for you for if your... you come in for cleaning. You yep. can say, hey, I want that new little part. And we can certainly take care of that for you. I hope the fan was really loud. Well, I didn't hear anything, but um, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm -mm. Yep. No comments. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All 
All right. So I'm going oh. underneath that last one. And again, when we get up to the front of the machine here, I probably got this all out of whack for the camera. Um, we are now going to basically, this is kind of backwards, um, but under and over and then to our needle. And I'll bring that needle threader down again so that you can see I already did two needles just because it's a little bit louder. I'm going to um, click this over to the chain cover part and I'm gonna pull this guy down so you can see this little lever that's over there. That is the needle threader. And I just need to get this close to the little area here. So I'm just gonna lay it there. Let it pull the thread in, and you can see it back yep, here. Yep, there's the thread pulling up there. Yep, and then just pull. So now I have all three of my needles threaded, and I have my looper done. You're out of the... I am. I fall off the shelf all the time. <laughs> So, as long as you're not falling off the wagon, we're good. Right, right. Absolutely. So we want to um, make sure that we do a couple of things to our machine. Um, our tensions are on two different sides over here. So um, my upper, my thread tension is over on this side here. So um, to do this, I want to be um, somewhere right around between four and six. So I'm going to slide that over to a five and my looper tension should be somewhere between zero and one. So I'm just going to start at one because uh, sometimes you don't know until you start. Um, and then I need to change my plate. So I had the plate in my hand because I showed it. Oh, look, there it is. And I'm just going to slide this on. Slides on. Like that easy. And you do have to have everything in the right. What do I have in my way? There we go. A clip. A clip. Yeah. Um, this will definitely prevent you from closing your door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was black and it was black in the road there. <laughs> I'm like, there's always it's always my fault. Um, and so here we have our plate. So we've got a couple of screws. And, um, and they're loose. Yes, they're, yes, they are. Yep, our <laughs> screws are loose. Both of us <laughs> have loose screws. <laughs> um, if you, I think, we think these screws should be longer, and so um, I'm using a slightly longer screw in mine to hold my uh, plate in. Um, we can certainly help you get a longer screw if your screw is also loose. <laughs> you can let We're us know about that. We're experienced in that, so yes. if you need some help along with us, <laughs> we can help. We would be happy to help you um, with that. I will talk a little bit about why. I'm just picking up I all know. kinds of stuff. I'm trying. You're trying. Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to keep you. I can't get it either. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to use my um, open toe foot, which is, is it going to give me a, there we go, this guy right here. Um, when I'm using my belt loop binder and uh, cover hemming things. So I'm going to slide that foot on. So while she's getting that attached, you guys can see what that looks like. It is really, we moved everything. We <laughs> My did. spot moved. Sorry. Um, so the open toe foot um, is really awesome because it has all of these markings and it has that opening so that you can see um, much, much better underneath and what's going on up to the needles. So, but these red lines are just phenomenal because it's way better marked than the standard foot. Do you have the standard foot somewhere easily accessible? Is this it? Yep. So comparatively, you can see that there's lines, but they're not dark. So depending upon your lighting and so on and so forth, those red lines being so bold there make it really, really nice to be able to see. And then adding on to that, that opening that's right here um, on that foot is phenomenal. So that is the open toe foot and that is what she has on the machine right now. Yep. All right. So you don't really know if it's right until you take a little bit of stitching. So before I put my attachment on, I am just going to take a little stroll down uh, this fabric and see where we're at. So when you are doing cover hemming, when you start cover hemming, 
it is super important that you start with fabric underneath your needles. You do not want to start in the air because your serger will not be happy. It, it doesn't like it. Nope. And so that little basket of thread that's over here, um, when you have the needles in there, it, for whatever reason, can make that work beautifully. See, days. Days. All right, so here we have, it actually looks pretty good. Sometimes yes, I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm on this oh, one. Oh, you're on this side. I'm like, why we're, isn't this We're working? over here. Yep. So there is our looper, which is really what um, generally is if you need an adjustment where it's going to need one, if it's going to. Um, there are the needles, which look absolutely stunning, but um, they almost always look stunning. They do. Um, it's the it's the looper sections that if you would need to make an adjustment, and, and they would generally if you see some, loose. it would be loose. Yeah. Um, that you would need to tighten things up. So, but that looks really really nice, which means we are ready to get started. So, what are we gonna do? We're gonna use an attachment on the foot, dun, 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 which dun. is kind of scary when you think about it. So, we're gonna put this little guy um, in front of the foot, and we're gonna use. We're gonna tighten our screws, so mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna get less crazy here. Yes. But we're gonna do some more crazy stuff. So this is the belt loop binder, one and a half inch. There is a second one that is a three quarter inch, and both of these are included in the Triumph kit. Here's a little one. It's not in the package, but it. Yeah, I have the package over here too. I just didn't have the um, lineup. So this is the little one. And she's putting the larger one on the machine right behind. You can see those lovely pink nails right through that opening right there. Um, but these are the two that we're going to work with. So we're going to do both. We're going to do the handles out of the big one here. And then we're going to do the ties out of this little one. So you guys can get to see both of them in action. Yep. So I broke the rules for a change. Aren't you proud of me? I am proud of you. <laughs> Sarah's like, well, you can't do that. And I'm like, want to make a bet? <laughs> I, I didn't follow the instructions. It's all right. I, I did what I wanted to do instead of what I was told. It's all right. So adjusting the belt loop binder, you will spend all of your time adjusting it and five minutes of your time actually sewing it. But once Pretty you much. have it adjusted, as long so the, there are two sets of screws. Um, I find that if I, once I have the first set, if I lock them down super yep. tight. Tighten those down and don't mess with them. Once you, you get that right, leave it alone. You shouldn't have to make a ton of changes on that, but you are trying to line up your um, belt loop binder, the center part of this with your center needle position. And um, because of where this needle, this actually, this screw works on my machine and, and this machine, um, the screw that came with the machine is a little bit short. And um, I found that I, I wasn't able to use this one over here. For so, whatever reason, this one on the left, it sits on top of the metal mm -hmm. for the other ones. Scalpel. Scalpel, please. Um, so it just needs to be a little bit longer <laughs> yeah so um but you can get it to work without changing you, the screw it's just easier you absolutely can so a couple of other things that you can do um that that you might find helpful um because the table can still slide over uh some people will put a little piece of um painter's tape or kimberbell tape um over on the two covers here so that so you that don't doesn't shift so it doesn't shift on you um mine stays on pretty good but if i'm if i'm getting a little overzealous i can slide this whole mechanism over and um, that's certainly a problem so you can tape that if that is a problem for you um and other things that people do is they sometimes bump this one so um depending on on how charismatic you are while you're sewing <laughs> are you italian and talk with your and sew with your hands so with your hands right but you do want your belt loop binder to be um you you do want it to be attached pretty well and um while i did struggle with this a, a little bit getting everything um exactly the way i wanted it i went and put three needles in anyways so <laughs> Uh, I found that two needles was a little bit more forgiving for this particular yep. stitch. So if you really are struggling with 
getting everything to line up the way that you want it to do. Um, we'll talk about some uh, things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. Um, I don't know how it's going to work. So These we're guys just here. How, you have multiple strips or is it one big one? I think I have more than one strip. And I also can certainly cut you can. a strip. Absolutely. So um, I am going to trim this down because what are the odds that this works on the very first time that I put it on here? 100%. I like those odds. You like that? Mm hmm All right. So, um, first things first, we're going to fold that in and we're going to make a point so that when we go to feed it into the binder, it's got a tip so it feeds nice and smoothly because what's going to happen is it's going to go in and then those edges are going to fold down and it works beautifully. You can use tweezers or a stiletto, whatever you want to push that fabric in there. So you can see she's got that stiletto. She's raised the foot up and we're going to start to see that fabric coming back here. But you also can see that that's a folded piece there because it's gone through the binder and it's literally folded those edges there. So we want to make sure that Was that another pair of scissors? I'm not really sure what I threw that time. I think that was a screwdriver. Mm, okay. Nope, it was the other scissors. Yeah. At least they didn't fall behind the cabinet. Ta-da! There we go. So, so, a lot of people have a lot of different ways um, that you can stitch this. I would say whatever really works whatever for you. Whatever floats your boat and whatever gets you the results that you need. So, what we're looking for here is a center back there. We want your stitches centered. And we want both sides of the fabric to be caught in the stitch. No. 100%. Like 100%. Said, so <laughs> this is um, a beautiful binding. And this is going to be used however you would like. So this is great if you're making handles. Um, it's called a belt loop binder, but God forbid you don't have to actually just use it for belt loops. <laughs> no. So please use this however you would like. And you can see that bias cut makes for super cool with stripes. Um, and look at the back. Ready? Here's the fancy. So this is what you are looking for. You want those folds to both come in and you want that looper to be catching. So sometimes it's because I had such positive vibes. It was. That this worked really, really well. So sometimes when you have a triple stitch, um, it pushes one of the sides of the fabric and it won't catch. Or it's off or center. Or it's off center. When you do get it to catch. And when you are off center, it's a lot easier for it to miss, which makes perfect sense. So you can see the difference here where this stitch is centered and this stitch is not. And you can see that this is a little bit looser over here. Um, we still caught the fabric here, but we got lucky. So um, up here, we didn't. So you can see that difference, all right? And that's what happens when the shift happens is that edge can sometimes get missed by your looper or your side needle. It gets shifty. It's, it gets shifty. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> so we don't want that push to happen. And sometimes having that center needle can cause that. I can't, unfortunately, tell you exactly when that's going to happen and when it's not. So if you are reading along down there, um, the open toe foot is going to help you align everything so that you're making sure that you're staying center. And a two thread wide, which means removing your center needle, mm -hmm. is generally going to be more forgiving. For whatever reason, that middle needle deflects the def fabric weird. Pushes. It, it, that's, that's the one that's going to, if you're going to have issues, mm -hmm. that's the one that's going to probably cause your issue. Sometimes just removing that needle will straighten it all up. I have no idea why. So, and sometimes you sit down and this beautiful thing happens and everything works exactly like it's supposed to. So if you tell the machine, you know, it's going to work right. Mm -hmm. Like I did, it, it, it it listens. No, I, yeah. I, I have no idea what, what happened there. It, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. So we have the foot attached squarely in front of the machine. 
the tensions are solid. We checked the stitch ahead of time. Everything was working beautifully. Boom. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, all of the stars were all aligned. All of the stars lined and up. And there you go. Yeah. So this is... Um, stretchy. You, you would need... It is stretchy because it's on bias. What do you need? I was looking for my ribbon. Um, you had it on a wrap. I did, I did not I bring mine because have, you said you needed it. I must have just left it over here. Okay. So... Um, one of the things is if you are on the bias that this is going to have that little bit of stretch one thing if you're using it for a handle you may not want too much stretch in there because it you want that strength um, so that you don't have that so one thing that you can do is you can feed in ribbon that would stitch right in there behind and there's the ribbon and you can do that and it will stitch that right like you were doing before and it stitches it right in place. So what that would do is just give that a little bit more strength. So if you're making something like a handle or a strap or something that's going to be bearing weight, that ribbon can give you a little bit more strength. So what we have here is, um, and I use the same size ribbon as she did. So we're prepping the same way. She's pushing in, she's trimmed that point so that there is um, an easy feed and pushing it up to the needle so that when we are starting in the fabric and it's it's there and she's been now feeding in, you can't quite see. Um, let me back up just a hair. Oops, that's not backing up. So you can see underneath here is the ribbon and it's literally just being pushed underneath and it's going to fit all the way through the binder without any curve. So um, you don't need, you just have to talk nice. I, apparently you just need to talk nice. And it kind of just feeds itself. It, the ribbon will really feed itself because there's only so much room for it to go into. And so as that um, fabric is being wrapped around it, it kind of just hugs it and then the stitch stitches it in place. So um, we got some, you haven't dropped those again yet. So hang not on. Not yet. Not yet. Um, and I was gonna so say it's early, but it's, it's not really. It's not, no. So these um, would be um, your, your uh, straps that you would want to stitch. Now, when I'm, there's there's no give now because there's ribbon in there so it's going to be a much stronger um piece to use as a handle to carry around um your beautiful dessert or casserole or whatever it is that you're you're using mm -hmm. for that so that is the one and a half um inch belt loop binder and the triple and the wide cover um Hem. Yeah, that one. Cover, cover hem, hem stitch. Cover hem stitch. So um, we have that same wide stitch that we can use on the other. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could also swap some things out in there. But um, so the rule that I broke <laughs> is I actually used a, um, a triple on my narrow. And um, I don't know, does it actually say that in the instructions? You're not supposed to do that? I feel like it does, but it might not. So um, here are my straps and I have uh, three threads and um, evidently I broke a rule. <laughs> Sarah told me I, I, was, I was a rule breaker. So um, that is how I use that. I wanted to have a little bit of, of pop in there. So I have two colors of thread. And um, these I did not add ribbon to because this is just a tie. Mm -hmm. So there's no real reason. Um, it's just holding that center piece um, together. So there's not any weight being held. So I didn't add anything extra in mm -hmm. those. So I'm so. going to try it with a three thread because if Lisa can do it, then I can. Why not? Why not, right? I don't know. Maybe we should open that up and see if it matters. Um, Let's since do we're going to go live on TV um, to tell people to do... To break the rules? To break the rules. Let's see if we're actually breaking a rule. Let's read the instructions. Something I never do. Let's 
say triple. This is not a good application for chain or narrow cover stitches. So it tells you how wide to cut your fabric strips. <laughs> it is best to test sew before attaching to the project. Gee, thanks, <laughs> yes, right? right? <laughs> so um, it shows either the tripper or, or a wide as your best option, right. but... Um, so, and again, you might find that that third needle in the middle might give you... Um, a, a push. It might push the fabrics a little bit more. So if you are struggling, um, that take is an option. Out. Yeah, take that out and, and try something else. So, so this is the box, if anybody wants to see what that looks like. That is the three-quarter inch. Um, and uh, again, this is the box for the um, Accolade or the uh, Triumph. And it is included in that, so that kit. let's see what happens. Push, push, push. 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 It's over here. Thank you. Look at that beautiful piece coming out of there. It's so pretty. It is. So we have a beautiful. Ooh. Feels like we're winning. We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Karma. <laughs> So we have a beautiful um, strap. And again, this is on the bias, so it's going to have a little bit of give. As the ties, you don't need, you can if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it would need to be more narrow. Um, your uh, wider won't fit in that little right. guy there. But um, we are certainly um, doing well. So you're going to want to make those. And then depending upon the order, you decide to sew everything together. So it's more a how do you want it to look when it's done? Mm -hmm. So I have it running through. So I needed to have mine um, stitched and then put in place before I put my lining fabric on. Mm -hmm. And um, depending upon what you decide to do is going to be a matter of when you needed this done. So I did my um, binding uh belt loop binding strips and then i also did my piping that was what i did first were those pieces and then got those done made my pocket set that aside and then i started constructing the bag itself yeah um so that was the order that i made my pieces in um i kind of feel really bad that this just worked out fine <laughs> <laughs> So, so there, there certainly can be some struggle with this. And if you've been to an in-store sip and surge, we have definitely um, had good days and bad days with this attachment, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. Yeah, I really think that um, that the, the, the key to making this successful is, is no wiggle. No wiggle and making sure that it really is square and straight. Um, which that no wiggle plays a big part in right it's really i had a very difficult time uh telling whether or not it was actually lined up straight because there are so many angles on here yeah. there's angles on here there's angles on here there's angles on here so there's nothing right. like plum <laughs> there you know even the corners of the machine itself have curves you know it's not a, a sharp corner which is nice because i'd probably hurt myself on it but you know there isn't any really sharp edges for you to align to and then the the attachment itself has no sharp edges so it's it's difficult to make sure that you are straight so some of the things that um, sarah has done on hers which i would recommend um are this is, again that. this is her um my personal personal attachment okay this is not the stores she's got marks for center so that you can and hopefully you can see that yeah all right so there's one on each end where's the light it's like not wanting to catch the light there there we go a little bit better so center so that you know where to line that up you have markings on your feet so you know where the needle is so you can line that up and make sure that as your um, fabric is being fed under the foot 
it's going in the right spot. That doesn't necessarily tell you whether you're square, but it tells you whether you're centered or not. Because it if you're going does. in off center, there's no way it's going to stitch in the center of that that um, fold. Correct. All right. Was, um, that was it. Just and then um, yeah. making sure that you're square. Right. Getting it straight. Stand back. Put it on and then take a couple steps back and look at it. Is it going in straight or are you skewed? Um, a little bit mm -hmm. and and do a little wiggle <laughs> yeah make sure that you are where it needs to be and we're um, I'm definitely looking into trying to find like some longer um, screws that have a, a, that a head on it that, yeah um, the thumb screw because the, this was not it doesn't this is a little longer than it needs to be I wonder mm -hmm. where that went way under there someplace yeah um, but this is definitely too short um, to really grab right. that closer one on the left. Too short. There you go. Too short. Too short. The difference. They can see, obviously, huge so, um, difference. Very, very large difference between these two screws. Yeah. So this is what we attached it with today. This is what comes with the machine. Um, so finding something that's it doesn't have to be this long, but longer than this that still has an easy attachment that you can do with your fingers mm -hmm. versus having to use the screwdriver. Right. Um, however, the screwdriver obviously works. Right, so, and you're using um, the screwdriver for the other and piece anyways. All of that being said, it doesn't mean that you can't use what came with the machine. This is just little things that we have found um, yep. that take a little bit of the guesswork out um, and less maneuvering. Yep. Yep. And it all has to do with how it actually attaches yep. to the bed of your machine and where you want your um, binding strip to come out and, and for your placement. So that can vary. Um, everybody's a little bit different on, on where they want things uh, to be. Absolutely. So, so I really didn't think that was just going to go that that well. That, I'm that went still really, really well. Shocked. Um, and it can be one of those days where every piece that you send through doesn't line up. And it can be one of those days like today that every piece that you do turns out perfect like this. Um, I have had both. I have had days where it works beautifully and I have had days where I have thrown away a lot of fabric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it really is how you're attaching it to the machine. Um, I don't know that I really understood that quite so much as after we've been playing with it. Yep, I definitely um, didn't know that that was my struggle. But that is definitely what it is. If it's not coming out the other side the way that it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. you need to move the piece in the front. At the angle. At the angle that it's going in. It's not feeding in the way that it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So if you are getting pieces that are coming out the other side that have wings <laughs> like this, you don't want wings, okay? And if that's what you're getting, you need to make some shifting of the foot, uh, the attachment, excuse mm -hmm. me, in front of the you foot. You need to be more shifty. Be a shifty character. <laughs> have some fun with us. Be some shifty people. So um, that is the belt loop binders and how we made the handles and the ties for the project. And again, we both did um, the handles to go all the way through the project for the strength. Um, and that is how we are um, doing that. Sarah's planning on actually using them as an accent piece. So she's sewing them to the outside of the outside piece mm -hmm. of the outside rectangle. So mine are on the buried on the inside um, and she is actually sewing them down. Um, yeah, using the chain literally stitch. using the chain stitch and attaching them to the outside of her rectangle so that you see them um, as a trim if you will, mm -hmm. more than um, just the handles. She's actually using it as a trim, yes. which is great. Um, so again, lots of options. It's just a matter of what you are trying to do. Absolutely. So it is um, approaching 4.30 and we just need to talk about finishing of this beautiful um, piece. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about all of the types of stitches that go into um, putting things together except for the chain stitch. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. What do you say? Absolutely. Um, so Misty asked, do you have, do you know the length that you used for the longer handles? Um, I would say when you have your project in front of you, 
um, decide how long you want that extra. Um, the original handles were about 15 inches or so. Right. Um, and then you're just going to measure basically twice the, the length of your The base length piece. of that base piece plus, um, and then I have a little about overlap. an inch overlap that I... Um, so one spot, it's a little heavier because there's an overlap of, I, I made it sure that, you know, there was a couple, it wasn't just one seam holding it together. I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure it wasn't going to snap on me at, at some other given point because otherwise it would defeat the whole purpose. Right. Um, so that 15, the 15 and then the length plus a little bit. So if you end up with your project adjusting because you trimmed a little too much here or a little too much there it would um fluctuate based on that um but i i actually i don't have all of the measurements here so whatever your your base um outside rectangle would would be plus the 15 inch handle for each side mm -hmm. that's that's basically what we did and of course if you were alternating or altering your pattern at to fit a different size casserole dish yep. then you, know, if you, you wanted could... a square instead of the rectangular mm -hmm. kind of thing or whatnot yeah i mean you wouldn't want to slug this over your shoulder so you oh, certainly God, no. don't want this to be like a crossbody bag <laughs> not, not one of those <laughs> not not even a little and that bit that would be so... interesting i mean maybe if it was like rice Krispie it's funny because i something. almost just brought a nine by 13 with me so that i could put it in there so you guys can and i was just like i don't want to bring that that's heavy <laughs> I'm sorry, I was lazy this morning. That's all right. <laughs> I did not so, do that. Um, so you have basically just snipped two threads. I did. And pulled them out. So you are now in center needle? I am in center needle and I'm so, prepped for chain. And why did you choose center? No reason. I almost always choose center. <laughs> so it's just easy, if you will, because then, you know, everything is kind of going in um, where you're instead of shifting something to the right or to the left, yeah. I find that I do generally choose center. That being said, you can choose right, center, or left and stitch with the chain. What a chain means is one, one. needle. <laughs> That's what that means. Yes. So you are in the cover hem side using all of the, the, the chain cover looper and one needle. So what that is going to do is, um, basically do a straight stitch. There is, the difference is there's no reverse on a serger. So you're going to get a little bit heavier look on your looper, even if you don't have a heavy thread. It's going to give you a little bit more decorative look. It looks a little um, twisted because, you know, just like us, right? Absolutely. Yes. So it's going to give you just a little bit, a um, little bit more pop on your looper thread. So we've got our pretend packet here. Yep. Um, and uh, she's just going to do a little top stitch on this so that you can see. I didn't press it, so it's not going to be um, a beautiful guy on there. But um, this would be what you would do with your pocket once you have um, pressed that. So if you did not do a rolled hem or a wave edge to do those um, in the first place, you just did a overlock stitch and then turned it pressed it, this is where your next step would be, is you're going to do a, basically a top stitch to give you, um, I didn't, um, I didn't, oh look, it looks good. I wasn't sure about my tensions. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you didn't what? I didn't check. No, that's all good. So um, we're gonna go around all four sides and then there's no measurements in your pattern, but um, as I showed you guys the picture when we first started, they do recommend that you then stitch down the center so that you have two pockets instead of one large pocket. Because otherwise, let's be honest, your whatever is going to just fall right out. So you want a little bit too smaller sleeves to put whatever you've got in there. And again, remember we didn't press this, so it's not going to be perfect here, guys. Okay. Um, but um, I literally. Um, I measured my pocket once I had it all, um, once I had it all there, and then I drew a line um, once I had the the pocket. I measured it in the width, and then I drew with a marking pen 
right down the middle so that I could see because obviously there's no real easy way to find center otherwise. So I literally drew all the way down with a marking pen and then I stitched right down the middle. So um, that's, there is no real other way to do that, unfortunately, unless you wanna press it in, that would be the only other way to mark that. Um, and then you're gonna do a stitch right down the center of that pocket. And then again, we're gonna set that aside. Mm -hmm. We're going to sew that to the lining piece. Mm -hmm. Let's show so, them yours. So um, on the number two, oops. I thought that was your head. No, nope. it, it was my hand, but I'm attempting to knock things off here again. So um, this is my pocket. And again, there is that stitch right down the center. Okay. I used a variegated thread so you can see there's, it's not a marking pen there. It's actually different colors of thread. And I did this part on my sewing machine because it was right next to me and, and I could. So why not? Mm -hmm. um, so I could have chain stitched it like she just did certainly capable of doing so, um, but I went ahead and did it on the sewing machine. So I do have two pockets there. And you did All that right. before you attached your before lining Before I attached the lining to here. So you don't see so that on the outside. That is correct. So what I did is, and it tells you in the instructions, um, approximately two inches down from one end. If you try to go farther, you're going to run out of room. So um, definitely don't go any farther. What I did is I drew um, a, a line, a mark two inches down, and then I folded it. I found center and made sure that I was still square. Was, was centering the pocket mm -hmm. in position so that I wasn't too far off one side or the other, and then found center of my pocket and lined it up on that, um, that line. So I marked center, and then I marked a two inch down, and that's where I placed it and then I sewed it on. Mm -hmm. So um, sewed one here, one here, and one there. And that's all there is to putting the pocket on. Mm -hmm. Once the pocket is on, then de again, depending upon the order that you're choosing, yep. you're gonna need those ties and straps in place if you're doing it according to the directions before you put the lining on, those will need to be sewn in. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is, for here, you're going to be, um, again, this has already been turned, but you're basically um, equidistant in, they're recommending about two inches, mm -hmm. pretty simple, all right, for your strap. And then on here, they aren't recommending anything other than centered. So again, I literally, super fancy, I folded it in half and that's where I stuck it. Yep. I didn't measure anything. I literally folded it in half and then stuck it in there and sewed it in place. Absolutely. All right. Once I had that sewn in place, then I did um, this guy here. So you're putting right sides together with just like anything else you're going to turn. Okay. Um, and then we talked a few minutes ago about turning mm -hmm. and leaving those openings and what you're going to do. Once you have that, you're basically going to have two rectangles. You're yep. going to have a long, a long skinny, skinny one, one and you're going to have a short fat one. Long skinny. These are not matching fabrics. And then one that is um, wider and shorter. You don't want to say fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm short and fat. <laughs> Can they look like me? Um, so you're going to have those guys there. And then what um, it does recommend that you do that top stitching all the way around mm -hmm. with a chain stitch in the directions. And um, Yep. We certainly don't need to take no. the time to go all the way around there. So but you can do it on your serger. You can do it on your sewing your machine. Your sewing machine. If you're whatever, not whatever you want it mm -hmm. to do. At this point, I want to just throw this out there. You've got lots of fabric in this this guy. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. Um, it's it's a lot, especially mm -hmm. when you're going around the corners. There's lots going on in there. Yep. So um, be careful as you're going. Take your time and get the stitch that you want as you're going around there. So um, there's there's a lot. There's <laughs> Yep, and if you don't have one of these fancy machines, that's okay, and you're using your regular sewing machine, this is probably a really good opportunity for you to get out your walking foot um, <laughs> because it's gonna be, um, the layers aren't quilted together. Right. You're gonna have some shifting. You're gonna do some of uh, those things. That's part of the reason why I thought maybe I would sew the handles through the batting um, because there isn't anything that's holding my layers together, which would kind of just help everything um, lay together. It's, you're certainly probably not, you could certainly wash this a million times and it would be fine because there's not any huge areas, but 
theoretically, right. when we have large open spaces, we want some stitching to be in to the middle of them, together. to hold them down. And, you know, being an embroiderer, I just kept going, I want to quilt this! I know! I want to quilt this! I kept thinking the same thing, <laughs> and I was just... like, I wonder, like, what... Like, I don't know, like, how many times can I punch through that insole braid and it still and be... And still have it protect from heat, heat and, and keep right. everything inside of that. Um, and Since I, I didn't know the answer to I that. I didn't either, but, you know, the other part of me was like, well, I could just decorate this fat. No, that's still not going to work then. Yep. You know, I was just like, but I wanted to stitch so bad. Um, it it was like everything that I could do um, to, to not let myself do that. Absolutely. <laughs> I just kept wanting to do that. So um, you're going to have those pieces. Once you have two rectangles, you just have to join them together. Yeah. And we are literally um, stitching a rectangle right here. They don't give you a dimension. So you can make that rectangle whatever size you want it to be. Um, what I did was found center of my base mm -hmm. um, and then I lined up I folded this guy in half and then in half again a lot like what we do in an embroidery hoop to mm -hmm. find and mark and place that in the center and um, I drew on here where I wanted it to be and then um, I folded that open I pinned not pinned what are those things you got wonder, wonder clips. clips that's what I used um, I wonder clipped my four corner things here because they're that that was like wow. the only place I could really wonder clip mm -hmm. and I didn't want pins mm -hmm. so I just wonder clipped those places together and um, I shoved it all under that foot boy was that a lot of stuff to go under that foot mm -hmm. so um one needle made it through the whole project I know I should have changed my needle um but it did work but I would would have probably not struggled through that final stitch this was a lot mm -hmm. to stitch through yeah so um heads up guys you probably should change your needle for that final stitch yeah it's gone through um, a lot it's of it. a lot of stuff to go through there um and i was i was done yeah <laughs> so like... let's summarize from the beginning so um what we did was we started with our three threads and our four threads to decorate yes. our pockets um then we went to the four thread and we made piping and then we attached our piping and then we either put our handles in um, and closed our our four our layers. rectangles. Yep. yep. Um, or we decided we were going to do the, the handles later. And then um, once we had our two rectangles done and our piping made and all of that stuff, we moved over to the cover hem side. We made our handles. Yep. Um, we did that with the three thread. We did the wide ones for our big handles. We did the narrow ones for our ties. And then we used our cover hem to stitch it all together, closed up our, our seam areas, yep. sewed our uh, pockets down and with. And whatever you're top stitching with, whether it's your serger or your um, sewing machine, that, that top stitch, that mm -hmm. chain stitch or a top stitch is going to um, close your opening. Mm -hmm. So that's all going to be done in one, one thing. Yep. So um, We got a couple questions there. We do. Um, let's pop those up. I got it over here so um the what stitch on the serger did you sew the straps on to the outside uh i would use a cover hem you could use any um they're going to be sewn in multiple times by the mm -hmm. time you're you know you're tacking them in place really mm -hmm. is what you're doing so um if you did them the way i did you only need them tacked in place because you're going to then go around with a four thread that's going to hold them in place yep. so um i actually did a straight stitch so uh, a chain to tack them in place, and then I over uh, overlocked them with the four thread mm -hmm. after that. Yeah, if you're if they're getting um, stuffed inside, yep. then you would be using your four thread because that would be during the sewing of the top pieces. You, you know, making your basically your squares, your yep. rectangles. Okay. If you're sewing them afterwards, then you'll be either using the chain stitch, which is one needle. Um, and uh, you would be finishing up your your project. Yep. Um, let's see. Sarah just says she's getting hers out. And Sandy, are you using knit fabric? Oh gosh, no. Mm -mm. Um, no, this is basically like a quilting cotton. It is definitely quilting cotton. You could use uh, 
canvas. You could use some home deck fabric, but you probably do not want to use anything that is super stretchy with this. This is designed to hold a casserole carrier. So, yep. um, so you don't you want shifting and, and moving. Would not, yeah, you definitely wouldn't want that. Um, you, you don't want any give in that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So no. yes, regular quilting cotton. Yes, ma'am. And um, should we bring up our um, our specials again? Just... We can absolutely do that. Is there any, we did all of these, right? Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to go here. That's not the one I want. <laughs> Let's make that um, all by itself. So hit that this button. One. All there right. We go. So let me go back to the front. So we are, we've got these four specials. Um, these specials are good until we run out of machines or whichever comes sooner, the end of May. May. All right, so we realize April, we only have a couple of days left. So um, we are, of course, going to extend these for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So um, this is until we run out of stock on these machines or until the end of May. So one more time, the Triumph, which is what we have sewn on today, um, MSRP is 7,500. And the package value today is basically $10,000. It's going to include the rolling bag, the 29 foot kit, which is everything except for a brand new one that just came out last year which wasn't available when the kit was created, all right? And the inspiration guide, plus you get $250 in Laboo Bucks, plus um, as long as you agree to pick up in May, we're going to include, um, we will make sure that you also are eligible for that mail-in rebate in um May for that baby lock mail and rebate. Mm -hmm. Fantastic so, bundle. Huge, huge bundle. And all of that for only $6,499. 35% off all of that. Huge, huge. Right. So um, it's just, just a <laughs> huge, huge bundle. Um, and then the accolade is the other eight thread. Mm -hmm. And that one has an MSRP of 4,500. Um, but with the value that we have added, the inspiration guide, the 16 foot kit, the rolling bag, it's a value of um, $58.99. It is 25% off at $44.25. Um, and you will also receive $200 in Lubu Bucks to use on any extra accessories that you would like. Uh, cabinet. What's that? Cabinet. Oh, and oh, and or um, <laughs> you can pick up a cabinet to put your serger in for um, $9.99, which is more than, um, that's basically 60% off the MSRP price um, of uh, $25.99. So it's a great deal if you need one of those. <coughs> I love my cabinets. They, yeah, I have one. Yeah. Mine's an older version, but mm -hmm. the, it's it just makes it so nice because it's that lower um, level. So your shoulders aren't raised. It just makes sewing and surging so much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. You can do it for such much so much longer of a period of time before your back says, hey, hello. Absolutely. So um, we also have specials on the Victory. The Victory's MSRP is $2,999. The total value of this package is $5,899. That can't be right. I think I might have gotten that wrong. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but that's not right. So sorry about that. That but, makes um, it feel like a really good deal. I'm like, wait, what? Um, the, um, the sale price on that is, um, 2,499 and you get $500 in Laboo bucks. So, um, two, five, three, it is close to four. Yep. It's uh, probably somewhere I in that range of do four, math that day. 4,000. Well, it's probably a copy <laughs> from another page and we Definitely. just missed it. So I'm so apologies. Yeah. That's the accolade so, price. So, so sorry. Um, but. Uh, it's still a beautiful package, and again, that um, is a higher amount of Laboo Bucks so that you can pick and choose how you want to use that serger. Do you, you want decorative things? Do you want a little bit more standard things? Do you want extra threads? How, what do you want to have mm -hmm. fun with there? And then last but not least, 
we have um, the Euphoria, which has an MSRP of $24.99, and that one is $19.99, um, and we are giving you 40% off of any surgery fee you want for um, the rest of this month, May and June. Um, we have had a really hard time keeping Euphoria's in stock. They have been so hot. Um, we actually just got ours on the floor and I played around with it. I was super impressed. I was like, man, I need this. I don't, but man, I need this. Right. Um, so if you have a really great four thread serger already, or maybe you already have an ovation or even um, an evolution or an accolade, but you're really missing out on that big space and you have room in your sewing room, um, get your hands on one of these euphorias. You will not regret no, that it's space. It's beautiful. It, yes. It's just so wonderful. And um, it does not have the air threading, but the needle, have needle threader on board is super easy to use and it's flawless. It's just yep. so easy. Um, it's oh, for Pete's sakes. <laughs> Wait, twin this one? Sure. Hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things that make so much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there are some great, um, great options. Um, if you have been looking at sergers for a while and you're wondering why the acclaim is not on there, it's because we don't have any in stock. Um, and so unfortunately, we didn't build a package around it because. I don't have any. Yeah, so, June or um, July still. We are still waiting on that. All of that being said, if that is the machine that you want, let us know. We'll certainly come up with something for you, but um, we can't build anything quite so fantastic because prices you can't have changed. Take so, it anytime. <laughs> and it won't be, you know, like she said, it'll be um, late summer, um, probably before we'll see it. Yep. So, um, but if there's something that you didn't see or you are confused about something that you did see, um, please give us a call. Um, like we said, we've already um, moved a few machines before the event. So um, please let us know how we can help. And um, super excited. I, um, I'm trying to think when's the next time I'm going somewhere so I can use this. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad this wasn't before Easter, Easter because I totally could have used it on Easter. But um, yeah. I, uh, this is so perfect for me because I, it's always a nine by 13 pan. Whenever I go somewhere, it's always in a nine by 13 pan. Always. Now you have an excuse. And now to I have it. a beautiful carrier to put it in. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, we can't thank you enough for spending your Tuesday afternoon with us in this special edition Absolutely. of what's new with LaBoo at SNL. We didn't, um, we didn't drink anything um, um, besides water, flavored water. Flavored water. We're so boring. I know. We are. Um, so we didn't really sip with you, but maybe you're at home. Um, the nice thing about these surgeries is that I don't feel like I have to drink either before, after, or no. during, <laughs> uh, which is really no. beautiful. I can't say that about every surgery I have ever owned. <laughs> no, there's no no drinking necessary to, to work with one of these. Nope, there's not. It's just very un stressful. It's not like free um, motion quilting for me. <laughs> no, no, that is still, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You still want to, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Oh goodness. So, um, um, if you're catching us on the replay, um, if you have more questions, feel free to, to comment. Um, I do monitor those, so I will yep. come back and I will. Or certainly send us an email, call the store. Yep. Um, yeah. We're, we're more than happy to answer any of your questions Yes. whenever you have them. And, uh, we're excited to uh, help you find the right surgery for you because mm -hmm. um, they are going to love them too. Yes, they are. They are the best out there. So thank you so much for spending some extra time with us today. And we will see you um, at the bare minimum next Tuesday mm -hmm. and um, maybe sometime sooner. So thanks again. You guys have a good one. Bye. Bye.